Well, welcome back, everyone. Dustin Nielsen alongside Evan Dom, and the Golden Bears will look to go to 3-0 and here against the Dinos this afternoon at Foot Field. Uh, hopefully better results for the University of Alberta uh, than we saw last night at the hockey game, Evan. Yeah, it was a tough one for the Golden Bears last night against the UMB Varsity Reds. As we saw the V-Reds skate into Claire Drake Arena for the first time and get a 6-2 victory, so that was a very good one for the Atlantic team. We are going to head to the anthem. We'll come back. The Bears will be receiving the opening kickoff. And we'll have the number four versus the number seven in the country in just minutes. When the season started, Evan, I don't know if we would have thought that by the time they came back to fulfill here, they'd already have two wins under their belt. Yeah, I think it's been a little bit of a surprise to see the Golden Bears come out with two victories. And, you know, facing UBC, which is a program that's rebuilding in Manitoba, which uh, struggled last season, I, I think you expected the Bears to come back here with at least one victory and, and probably to be in a reverse role with the Calgary Dinos here, probably come in one and one with the Dinos coming in uh, two and oh. Uh, obviously, they had a tough matchup in the opener against the Saskatchewan Huskies, but I think if you were to ask uh, all the fans here and the media types which team would be 2-0 and and in first place after two weeks of the Canada West season, it would be the Calgary Dinos and not the Golden Bears. So it's been a, you know, a surprising and a good start for the Golden Bears so far to this season, and it'll be interesting if they can prove themselves today against uh, one of the best teams in the nation, the number four-ranked Calgary Dinos, who have struggled thus far. First webcast in uh, Golden Bears football history today. Three of us taking a part in that. That's nice. Uh, I feel we'll kick things off here for Calgary. Back to return for the Golden Bears, Jarvis and Ralph. And the Bears will look to start things right on their home field after a very impressive 2-0 and start on the road to kick off the season. I fell will step into this one, and that will be caught at his own 15 by Jarvis, who's averaging 117, 117 yards per carry on the season. He's able to barge his way up to the 40, and that is pretty decent field position to start the football game here for the Golden Bears. Pretty good return there from Jarvis. It took Travis Payne to wrap him up at about the 40-yard line, so a good return there for the Golden Bears to open up this contest against the Calgary Dinos and we'll get our first opportunity to see Julian Marchand as the starting quarterback for the Golden Bears this season. Expecting big things from here, from him uh, after the way he played in the first two opening games? Absolutely expecting a lot out of Julian Marchand and he's going to be the key to the Bears offense all season long. Marchand takes a look Jarvis in behind him, he'll come from the shotgun at his own 35, Marchand will throw this one up nobody there and almost picked off and not the best way to start the ball game there for Julian Marchand. And he threw that one up, and nobody was home down the near sideline here. Yeah, some miscommunication there on the Bears' offense as we see Marchand going to the sideline and talking to offensive coordinator Jeff Stead about that one. And you saw Marchand point to himself after that play. Why Getty for Calgary, the closest player to that football at about the 40-yard line of the Calgary Dinos and just outside his fingertips, but not a very good play there by Julian Marchand. Some miscommunication early. Second and ten for the Golden Bears from their own 40. Marchand in a shotgun again. Jarvis in behind him. And this one will be blown down. Julian Marchand not getting that ball off in time. And they'll march that one back five yards. And now it'll be second and 15 for the Golden Bears. So a little bit of a sketchy start here to the game for the Bears. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start here for the Bears offensively. A time count violation there against Julian Marchand, and now they'll be scrimmaging 2nd and 15 at their 35. 
Marshawn again has Jarvis in behind him. As I mentioned, Jarvis averaging 117 yards on the ground in the first two games in the season. Marshawn steps back. He's going to be forced out to the right side, scrambling away, and he's able to get away from one attacker, still going, throws it downfield, far side, and that one almost caught, but they could not bring it in down the right side there. That was uh, Michael Wojcicki who had an opportunity. He got a hand on it, but he couldn't bring it in. And that's the type of play you're looking for from Julian Marshawn to extend that play and get outside the pocket and make some defenders miss and give himself an opportunity to get the ball downfield. And like you said, just outside of the receiver's hand. But a good job there by Marshawn to roll out some pressure there from Sam Hurl, the Calgary Dinos defender, to force Marshawn to throw that ball on the run. So it will be Hugh O'Neill here. He's averaging 39 yards per punt in the first couple of games of the season. He's ranked 10th among CFL draft prospects uh, right now, and if a team needs a kicker, he'd be a first-round pick, would he not? Absolutely. He'll fill a role if somebody wants to take a kicker in the first round. Absolutely. Now O'Neill will let this one go from pretty much his own 25 high spiraling punt, and it's taken at their own 25, and good coverage downfield by the Golden Bears, and they are able to contain the returner, uh, Nathan Kuhorn for the Dinos. Very good kick there from Hugh O'Neill and good coverage by the Golden Bears downfield as Kuhorn, like you mentioned, fielded the ball at his own 25 and only got it up to the 30. So a good job there by the Bears special teamers to get downfield quickly. Dinos will scrimmage from their own 30 and we get our first look at the Leski here. 18 year old true freshman who uh, hasn't thrown a pick at least so far this year and I think that's something you have to look for. He's got Walter in the backfield but he comes over on the near side and they will scramble for this. They'll say it's an incomplete pass. Uh, but those aren't bad numbers so far for the 18-year-old quarterback. No, and Dulesky looked pretty good last week against Regina. 13 of 20, we talked about it on the pregame show. You know, not fantastic uh, completion percentage-wise, but no interceptions. And that's what you're looking for from a true freshman or rookie quarterback filling in for the reigning head Creighton Award winner in Eric Lavich. So, so far so good for him as the uh, Dino starting pivot. Second and 10, once again from the 30, he had looked for Kuhorn on that last pass, and it was incomplete. So Dulesky will go again, empty backfield, he's by himself in the shotgun from his own 25, looks to his right, has to scramble away from Greenslade, and now he's going to try to run it, and he will not get the first down, comes up a couple of yards short. Uh, decent ability there to get away, though, from Dulesky. Yeah, a very good job there by Dulesky to, like we saw for the Golden Bears, to get outside the pocket there and uh, extend that play. Looked like he was dead in the backfield, but a good job to get about eight yards there and uh, make sure the Dinos have an opportunity to punt here. Decent first stand defensively from the Golden Bears. A good job there by the Bears to get the two and out here, as uh, we'll see Eiffel punt. But, yeah, a good job by the Bears there to get after the quarterback and force him to make a play. Eiffel now will be taking this one from about his own 25. Back there to uh, grab this one. David Court and Jess Valu for the Golden Bears. This one's going to come to McCourt, or Valu rather, and he grabs it at the 50, gets up to the 55 before he is taken down, and there is a flag on the field, uh, but not bad field position here depending on the flag uh, for the Golden Bears. Yeah, it should be no yards there against the Calgary Dinos. I believe that'll be the call. Very likely, yes. So the Bears will get a couple extra yards here after the penalty, and it'll be inside Calgary Dinos territory, as uh, I believe they will scrimmage just inside midfield here. They'll get it on the uh, 54 of the Dinos. Marshawn coming out looking for a, a better effort and execution than they had in the uh, first possession of the ball game for the Golden Bears. Jarvis in behind him. He's got Riley Richardson to the near sideline. Looked for Richardson on the first play of the game, but he wasn't there. Now Marshawn in the shotgun. He'll throw it to Jarvis. Jarvis right into the line of scrimmage and may even have lost a yard on that play. So that's the first look for uh, Matt Jarvis so far in this football game. Yeah, nowhere for Jarvis to go on that play and will be a loss of one yard for the Bears running back. And a good job there by the Calgary Dinos, Travis Payne, to penetrate the offensive line there and get all over Jarvis who goes down. As we'll see, uh, one of the athletic trainers run out there and tend to the Golden Bear running back. And he's been very good for the Bears so far. He had a breakout week last week against the Manitoba Bisons. Did a very good job for the Bears on the ground and really shredded the, the Bisons up and was the reason the Bears ran out to such a big win in that game in Winnipeg. Blaine Bartoli will come in as uh, Jarvis will head off the field. Bartoli so far on the season, he's got eight carries for 16 yards, averaging two yards a carry. Uh, numbers nowhere near Jarvis 
But uh, we'll see what he can do here in behind Marshawn, who will be going second and 11 from the 55-yard line. Three receivers to his left for Marshawn. Still looking for his first completion of the ball game. He drops back now, comes down the near sideline. That's a little too far, and that one almost picked off as well, as I believe it was Getty again who got over there, and he got his fingers on it but couldn't corral it in. It was Wyatt Getty again for the Calgary Dinos as he almost had that ball just along the sidelines there, stretched out off the hands, off the fingertips like you mentioned, but unable to bring that one in. And the second close call there for Julian Marchand early on in this football game and we're not even five minutes in yet. 11.44 to go here in the opening quarter. Hugh O'Neill will come back out for his second punt of the football game. Both offenses not really able to accomplish anything here in the early going of the first quarter. Dustin Nielsen alongside Evan Dom. Calgary calling a timeout here. O'Neill last year... You talked about it, uh, you know, before we went on the air and a little bit in the pregame show with uh, Doug McLean O'Neill last year was this team's uh, best player. Uh, good thing or bad thing when your best player is a kicker? Uh, never a good thing when your kicker is your best player. And Hugh O'Neill was uh, dominant for the Golden Bears kicking the ball, but I think you'd rather have a dominant player on the defensive or offensive side of the ball. Not to say there weren't bright spots for the Golden Bears last season. Jason Hetherington obviously had a very good year defensively with eight interceptions for the Bears. But overall, as far as the most consistent player uh, for the Bears last season, it was Hugh O'Neill and his punting and field goal as uh, he's obviously a big-time prospect in the CFL ranks uh, inside the top ten as far as that goes. On the sidelines, the staff continues to work on Matt Jarvis. He was on the table, and now they're working with him. Uh, So we'll see if he's able to return to this football game. It will be Hugh O'Neill from his own 40. And he'll be looking to pin the Dinos deep here. Takes the snap, bobbles it. Now he's going to have to hurry. He'll have to make a play out of this. Moves to the right, and now he'll get that kick off. And still, very good kick down to the Dinos 10. And that's where they will contain them. Uh, boy, running to his right, that was a pretty good kick. That's a phenomenal play there by Hugh O'Neill. He bobbled the snap, but it was composed. Picked the ball up and ran to his right, like you mentioned, and booted that one on the run from his own 40 all the way down to the Calgary 10-yard line. So talk about a good play under pressure there from Hugh O'Neill. A big-time kick for him as he keeps field position on the Bears' side. 11.24 to play here in the first quarter, and the Dinos will start from deep in their own territory here. No yards called. Just of the five-yard variety here against the Golden Bears. So not a, a terrible penalty to take there. And last season, penalties were a big thing for the Bears. They were the most penalized team in Canada West and really hurt them as far as, uh, you know, fighting their own cause last season along with turnovers and interceptions. So a lot of times they were their worst enemies uh, during 2009. Eric Dolesky will go to work from his own 27 here for the Dinos, their second possession of the game here this afternoon at Foot Field. He'll hand it off to Walter. Walter finds a little bit of room up the middle, and he's going to barge up towards the first down. He didn't get there. Take him down at the 35, so they'll still have about two and a half yards to go here on second down. Matt Walters is going to be key for the Calgary Dinos this afternoon. We saw him last year put up huge numbers for the Dinos during the regular season, over 1,100 rushing yards, nine touchdowns for the Calgary product, and he is a very good offensive threat for the Dinos. And with Glavich out of the lineup, Parker out of the lineup, he's going to be big time in the in the Dinos' backfield. He's averaging just under 70 yards per game here early in the season. And now they'll try the end around, and that's not going to work if they stumble in the Golden Bears. Defense coming up big there as uh, Stephen Lambala had nowhere to go. And another decent uh, stand there by by the defense. A good job there by the defense on second and short there. It was second and a yard, and they hands the ball off to Lombala there on the end around play, and he gets snuffed out in the backfield, and a loss of about five yards on that one for the Dinos, and it'll force a punting situation here as we see the second two and out of the afternoon for the Dinos as we're still looking for our first first down of this contest for either side. Is that surprising? To you right now that we haven't seen a first down, first five minutes of football game? A little bit surprising. I think both offenses have looked a little bit out of sync. I don't really like that play call on second and short there to hand the ball off that deep in the backfield, but uh, 
you know, a little bit surprising. We haven't seen a first down yet from either side in, in four opportunities combined. Highfield will let this one go from about his own 20. Valu uh, back around his 40 with David Court back there as well. First punt of the game, we saw Valu gain about five yards on the return. And now this one, not a very good punt. It takes a little bit of a bounce, and Court will grab it. Now David Court to the 55, up to the 50, and he's taken down. So slowly but surely, uh, the Golden Bears are gaining a little bit here on, as far as the battle for field position goes. Yeah, they gained four net yards there. The field position battle uh, started the last possession at the Calgary 54, and now at about the Calgary 50 here. So very good. A field position to start this drive again for the Golden Bears, and it's time to make good here and do something as Matt Jarvis back in the game at running back for the Bears. Julian Marchand still looking for his first completion of the football game as Jarvis just to his left, and he'll work out of the shotgun. He steps back into the pocket. There's a quick pass across, and that one a little bit too high for the intended target, and that was Ryan Murrah, who's got three touchdowns so far on the season. He couldn't get his hands on that one. Yeah, that one a little bit too far and too hot to handle for Marat on the sidelines right by the Golden Bears bench. And Julian Marchand with a little bit too much sauce on that one for the receiver as the Bears here, again, it'll be second and long. We are scoreless just past the five-minute mark of the first quarter of the ball game. He's Evan Dom. I'm Dustin Nielsen. Julian Marchand in shotgun once again with Matt Jarvis in behind him this time. And he'll take it at the 55, and that one will be blown down. procedure on the Golden Bears so they're going to put themselves in the second and long situation here second and 15 from the 55 still expecting something from some of these offenses here we saw a little bit of sloppy play early on here in that procedure call indicative of that from the Golden Bears is again another second and long situation now Marshawn from the shock and last time we were in second and long he had to scramble out to his right this time he sits back in the pocket Thought about making a move. Now he does. He's got a little bit of field on the right side. He'll get to midfield. Now the 50 towards the 45 before he is taken down. But he will be uh, quite a bit short here of the first down. Uh, but scrambling again to the right side there. Picked up positive yardage, but not near enough to get the job done. And Hugh O'Neill will have to come on and uh, punt this ball away again. Third consecutive time. Yeah, and Julian Marshawn there forced. Had quite a bit of time in the pocket, but good coverage downfield by the Calgary Dinos secondary. And Force Marshawn there to roll out of the pocket to his right. Good pressure from the defensive end. Kelly Temple from Calgary to get out there and force Marshawn to run that ball. And not close to a first down, but he gets past the original line of scrimmage. O'Neill will let this one fly from about midfield. Who horned back in his own end zone to retrieve this punt. 8.42 to go here in the opening quarter. O'Neill angles this one. To the sidelines, Kuhorn's got it, and he's taken down right away. Good good coverage downfield so far by special teams for the Golden Bears. Very good coverage by the Bears downfield on the punt so far from Hugh O'Neill, and he'll give you an opportunity every time out there as a special teamer to make a play because he's that good of a punter, and he puts his players in good positions to succeed. And a good job there by the Golden Bears to swarm Kuhorn inside his 10-yard line, and again, a tough field position start for the Dinos as Dulesky out there trying to get our first first down of this contest. Dolesky from his own nine-yard line with Walter in the backfield. Three receivers far side of the field. And he goes to Walter. Walter right up the middle, and he is stopped there. Kevin Chave, I believe, with the tackle. Just a single yard there for the Calgary Dinos. Matt Walter, as you mentioned, Che with a good job to get in there and stuff out that run and not let the Dinos get anything on first down, really. Second and nine from their own 10-yard line here for the Dinos. Their offense, much like the Golden Bears, hasn't really had an opportunity to get much going so far in the football game here this afternoon. Now they'll try to come near side of the field. That pass is completed, but not near enough for the first down. They're going to be shy by a couple of yards. And now the Dinos will be in a punting situation once again. Big-time pressure there on the blitz by Jean-Marc Jones off the edge, and he was in Dulesky's face. Able to get that football away, but it won't be enough for a first down. So a good defensive stand by the Golden Bears as they brought some pressure there. And Dulesky, like I mentioned, give him credit for standing in there and making a solid play on the completion, but still not enough. It'll be about 
Third and one, and they will punt the ball away from deep inside their own territory. And it will be Quartz and Valu at about the Calgary 50, waiting to receive this punt. And I feel has been backed up the entire day, and now he's pretty much right at his own two-yard line. He's able to handle the snap cleanly, and he'll just go back and concede the safety. So a position battle will turn up some points here uh, for the Golden Bears about midway through the first quarter of the football game. Yeah, they get two points off the field position there. As you mentioned, IFL just concedes that safety and a smart move there by the Calgary Dinos, I think, to try and get the field position back at least even or on their side at least. And uh, Blake Nell, we should mention, not on the sidelines today for the Dinos. Uh, suspended one game by Canada West after an interesting uh, scenario at McMahon Stadium in the opening weekend when we saw uh, the Saskatchewan Huskies come to town and on a controversial hit on running back Anthony Woodson, uh, Neil came out onto the field and started giving it to the Saskatchewan sideline and a couple of Saskatchewan players and he was suspended this week by the conference and will not be here in Edmonton at this football game serving out that one game suspension. Now the Golden Bears will go to work from their own 35. Here's Marshawn. He goes to Jarvis. Jarvis oh, broke one tackle but the second guy was able to wrap him up and he gets back to about the line of scrimmage uh, but then we'll be stopped there. Maybe he got a yard on the play. Uh, it looked as though he was going to break one, and then they managed to tie him up last second. Yeah, it was a good job there. A little bit of a shoestring tackle there from the Calgary Dinos defensive line as they brought Jarvis down, and it will just be one yard on that rush as uh, continuing to look for some offense here from either side. And Calgary rush defense, six in the conference, like we mentioned. That's something the Bears will be looking to exploit. Julie Marchand in a shotgun with three targets to his left, two to his right, and now Jarvis... We'll slide over to his right. He'll block for him. Marshawn takes a look. He comes to the near sidelines. That's caught by Porter Brown, but it's not enough for the first down as they get about five yards. I guess a uh, small, small battle one there as Marshawn's able to get a pass completed here, uh, but it would have been nice to see it be about five more yards downfield. Yeah, just a short little route there from the Bears looking for the receiver to break one, but Steve Truzak, cornerback, did a nice job there on the coverage. And brought him down immediately at about the Bears' 40-yard line. So again, another two and out. As we'll see, uh, Hugh O'Neill out on the field again. And he's been busy for the Golden Bears. Fourth punt to the first quarter here for Hugh O'Neill. And we've still got six minutes to play. Golden Bears football. Dustin Nielsen alongside Evan Don. Doug McLean will have your halftime for you. O'Neill from about his own 30. And back waiting for their Kuhorn and Adopko. And that one will go into the hands of Adopko. He bobbles it. And uh, they will cover him up quickly there. Good job once again downfield. Really nowhere to go here. As that was Lane Dell on the tackle. And the Golden Bears really haven't given the Dinos anything as far as the return game goes. No, they've done a good job on coverage so far today. And Hugh O'Neill, not with his best punt there, but a little bit of a bobble, like you mentioned, from the Calgary uh, receiver there, Chris Dobko. And uh, had to jump on that ball quickly as the Bears were swarming. Well, let's see if the Golden Bears defense can uh, go back to work. I would say pretty decent uh, first 10 minutes of the football game for the defense. Yeah, good defensive struggle so far for both sides. Both defenses have looked pretty good. And I think it's been a little bit of a case of the offense is not looking so good either. Now Dolesky with two backs. And they'll pitch it out to the right side. A little bit of room here to run. A lot of room to run. And there's a first down. Finally, in this ball game, it's Matt Walter. He picked up about 13 to 14 yards on the play, and a little bit of confusion for the Golden Bears defense. And they're likely they shut down that hole because there's a lot of green space in front of them. There was a lot of room there for Matt Walters to run out the right side, and a nice little play call there from the Calgary Dinos. As a little bit of misdirection in the backfield as Lombala crossed with Walter and a little toss there from Dolesky to Walter and he made the most of it with a first down. Now the Dinos will work from their own 47. Spinning out here, Dolesky, he's in trouble and he's taken down as they were able to gobble him off. Dale Stevenson led the way and he ended up getting a little help there from Gerbrandt. And uh, boy, you know, that's a nice way to bounce back. Yeah, good job there from the defense. A little bit of a play action from the Dinos and the Bears would have none of it like you mentioned Stevenson in there quickly and Gerbrandt as well as they get the sack and a loss of about four and a half five yards on the play as the Dinos here was second and long they will work uh, from their own 40 we're looking at probably second and 17 for a first down and they will call a timeout as Dolesky wants to get things orchestrated properly here 
And the Golden Bears defense, after giving up the biggest play, it wasn't a massive play, but it was the biggest play of the ball game. Uh, they bounced back with a sack on Dulesky. Yeah, a good defensive play there from the Bears to take that run from Walters and really mitigate that as far as making this a long. It'll be second and 18 for the Dinos, and they take a timeout to sort out things and see what they want to do with their rookie quarterback at the helm. But a good job there from the Bears. Some pressure. We've seen some pressure on a couple of series from the Bears. Uh, we saw Jean-Marc Jones off the edge last time out for the Dinos, and good job by Dulesky there to avoid the sack. But that time he had really nowhere to go as the Bears had a couple of guys in the backfield all over the quarterback. Second and 18 from the 39 for Dulesky. And the Dinos, he's got two backs in behind him. Last time he did this, they pitched to the right side, and Walter ran for about 13 yards and a first down. Crowd here trying to get behind the Golden Bears. Now they'll move one more receiver out to the right. He'll head up under center. Fake the handoff to Walter. Now they're going to try the deep ball downfield. Crotchuk on it there. Uh, but that one on the sidelines and a good job by the defense. And they will force Eiffel back out onto the field to punt this ball away. And they move Steven Lombal out of the backfield there as the receiver. And he was the intended target down the right sideline there. But the ball too far for him as it sailed into the Bears bench. And really nowhere close to being completion there for the Calgary Dinos. And after that one first down, the big sack from the Bears forces the long second down play and they're unable to complete that and we'll see another punt from Eiffel. 4.13 to go here in the first quarter and Eiffel will uh, punt this thing away from about his own 25 back on there waiting in his court and Valu. Clean snap, he's got it, and he'll boot it away from his own 30. That one's high, hanging up there in the wind, and it will be caught by Valu. Now he'll try to find a hole, finds a little bit of space. That's closed up quickly, and he is taken down at about the Golden Bears 48, and Julian Marchand will come out again, trying to get something going with the offense here. Jarvis and Marchand have had great starts to the season, but both of them have been contained so far here this afternoon. Yeah, and either guy has done a whole lot so far uh, at, in this football game, we've only seen one completion from Julian Marchand, and it was a short one on second down and nowhere near first down last time out for the Golden Bears. And we've seen Matt Jarvis with a number of carries, but really nothing doing so far and yet to break one. Defensive battle in the first quarter. It's first and ten from their own 48 for the Bears. Here's Marchand. He's got Marat moving along the line. He'll go to Jarvis. Jarvis tries to get away from one tackle. He plows ahead and maybe a yard on the play, uh, but really, you know, Jarvis hasn't had too many holes to hit so far here this afternoon. No, there hasn't, hasn't been a ton of holes for the Golden Bears running back, and, and he's a guy who doesn't have exceptional vision, but when you give him the opportunity and you give him those holes, he will break runs. He has good speed, good foot speed, and, and pretty good in the open field, but not the best running back as far as vision goes, so you have to set up those holes for him as an offensive line. Now Marshawn out of the shotgun again. He's got three receivers far right. Now they'll make a quick switch. And he steps back, takes a little bit of time, finds a target over the middle, and that's caught and hung on to. Wow, Jess Ballou lays out, takes a beating, but he's able to hang on to the ball, and finally something for the offense to talk about. A big-time play there by Julian Marchand, had lots of time in the pocket, and he found Ballou streaking over the middle, who made a really nice catch and held on to that ball after a big-time blow from the Calgary defender Wyatt Getty on that play as Valu did a great job to hold on to that football. And they're going to keep things moving here pretty quickly, though. Scrimmage from the Calgary 30. Marshawn in the shotgun. The handoff to Jarvis. He finds a hole. Matt Jarvis to the 15. Now towards the 10, and he's taken down at about the Dinos 14. And we talked about it when they came up for this series. Marshawn and Jarvis hadn't got it going, and now they did. Yeah, consecutive plays, big plays there from the quarterback, and then the running back, about a 14-yard, 15-yard gain there from Matt Jarvis. And I mentioned it, a big-time hole there from the offensive line, and he exploited it as the Bears now deep in Calgary territory. First and 10 from the Calgary 14. Marshawn with Jarvis in behind him. Three targets to the right and two to the left. Marshawn looks, and they're going to blow this one down. And it will be procedure against the Bears. Kind of kills a little bit of the momentum they had going. Yeah, a little bit. Take uh, that five-yard penalty against the Golden Bears. So they'll scrimmage at about the 19-yard line here. But uh, two consecutive plays there, back-to-back big-time ones for the Golden Bears. A really nice throw and catch from Marchand to Valu, And then a big run from Matt Jarvis. And the Bears' offense 
with a couple of first downs here, and they're looking like they're in business. Shane Samuel has uh, checked into the ball game here offensively for the Golden Bears, and he'll line up in the backfield with Jarvis now out to the left of Marshawn. Marshawn gets it, fakes it to Samuel, throws it over to Valu. Valu tried to dodge a bullet, and he sprawls ahead for a couple of yards on the play, but they'll still have a lot of work to do. It'll be second and about 13 for the Bears offense. Valu really with nowhere to go there, trying to set up some wide receiver blocking for Valu, but unable to do so as we saw Ty Noble jump up and make the stop as a minimal gain there for the Bears on first down. They are definitely within Hugh O'Neill territory, uh, but now they'll try to keep working towards the end zone. Three targets to the left. Marshawn drops back, and this one is blown down. Some bodies flying around there after the whistle. Time count violation, I believe, will yes. be the call. It was very close to Julian Marshawn getting that one off in time. So the after you know a couple of great plays by the offense here, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot with the last couple of plays. Yeah, a couple of defensive or offensive penalties, I should say, against the Golden Bears, and it slowed their march here. After, like we mentioned, two of the best offensive plays of the afternoon so far. Now they work from the Calgary 22. Marshawn in the shotgun, Jarvis in behind him. Three receivers to his left. He's going to move to his left. Now he's going to try to come up over the middle, going up for it, and it's caught. Wow, what a catch. Chalk it up. Touchdown, Golden Bears. Michael Ojiki goes up, and he comes down with it, and the Golden Bears extend the lead. An absolutely great catch there by Ojiki as Julian Marchand threw that ball up, and it sort of hung up for quite a while, right at the goal line almost. But give credit to the receiver, Ojiki, as he went up. Got that ball, brought it in for the touchdown. An absolutely terrific catch from the Golden Bear receiver as the Bears now up 8 nothing here with the point after to come on a very good play there by the receiver in the end zone to haul that one in with tight coverage. Well, you were right. Uh, that ball seemed to hang up there forever. I thought for sure the defender would be able to get inside and knock it down. But Wojcicki did a good job using his body to kind of fend off the defender and let that ball eventually uh, slide in and that extra point. Is good. And it will be a 9 nothing lead here for the Golden Bears. And we, we talk about how we were surprised with the 2 nothing uh, start to the season. Uh, if you look at their first couple of games, the majority of their points didn't come to the second half. Are you a little surprised with the, with the start here for the Golden Bears? You know what? They had a slow start offensively in those first few series. And in that last series, they showed us what they could do with a couple of good throws, a good run from Matt Jarvis, and a balanced attack from the Golden Bears. But, yeah, 9 nothing here with a buck 29 to go in the first quarter. And, and I'm more surprised by the fact that Calgary really has shown nothing offensively. We saw one good run from Matt Walter, but they haven't established him in this football game, really. And he has to be the key for them offensively this afternoon. And that's obviously key to get that running back involved to wear down the defense, but also the fact that, you know, he's arguably the best running back in the nation, and he's still looking to really get his season uh, jump-started here. You think they've done a good job clogging the box so far? The only time uh, Walter was able to gain anything was when they got it to the outside. Yeah, and I think their play calling has been a little bit predictable here for the Calgary Dinos, and it's played well to the Bears' defense. Here's O'Neal. He'll kick it off with a 9 nothing lead for the Golden Bears here at Footfield. It's a good kick, and they'll take it uh, just inside the end zone, and now they will run it out. Trying to make a little bit of room here. Dobko, and he's taken down. Got back to about the 12. And the return game continues to struggle here uh, for Calgary this afternoon, and they'll start with horrible field position once again. Good job by Chris Mucena on the coverage there downfield for the Golden Bears. I believe he will get credited with the tackle for the green and gold. And like you mentioned, field position once again in favor of the Bears. They will go first and ten from their own 13. Dolesky out here again. Hasn't really got the offense moving outside of the one 13-yard running play by Walter. Now they'll try an option to the left. That might work as they get to the outside again. Walter gets around. Gerbrandt keeps going, and he's able to get up to about the 30. So we've seen two successful offensive plays from Calgary, and they both come when they get to the outside against this Bears defense. Yeah, they've both been little pitches by Dulesky to Matt Walter, and this time they go up the left-hand side, and Walter shows off his tremendous speed. It looked like he was going to be cut off at about the 20-yard line. But he gets it out to the 34 here of the Calgary Dinos. And another good run from him. 
as uh, that's really the second positive play this afternoon for the Calgary Dinos offense. First and ten from their 34. Two backs in behind Dolesky, who will start this in shotgun from his own 30. Another pitch to the outside. They'll try to work it again. This is Guido trying to tackle the Dino, but they're able to get up over the uh, 45-yard line, and that was Lombala who uh, took the ball that time. Uh, that's a couple of times now when they've had the two backs set in there behind the Lesky. They've been able to get some positive yardage. Yeah, and Steven Lombala, only a second-year guy, but he's shown signs last year of being a good running back and a good option for the Calgary Dinos. And with those two guys in the backfield, obviously with Anthony Woodson still banged up for the Dinos, third on their depth chart at the running back position, Lombala's done a good job of filling in for him and providing something and a good run there and another first down. 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. They'll head out to the right. And he'll fake it, and Dolesky's able to pick up positive yardage. He gets about six on the play, uh, so maybe Calgary realizing that the running game's the way to go here. Yeah, a little bit of an option offense here from the Calgary Dinos as Dolesky uh, had the ability to pitch that to Walter, but he decided to haul it in after the little fake, and he picks up positive yardage, about six yards. So a good play there from the quarterback as he made the most out of that situation. And this will be the final play of the opening quarter. It's the Golden Bears with a 9 nothing lead. He's Evan Dom. I'm Dustin Nielsen. At halftime, Doug McLean will slide back in. He's your halftime pregame and postgame host this season here on Golden Bears football. Dolesky from his own 52. He's going to look to pass near side of the field. They'll get the first down as he is able to find Dobko. And Chris Dobko hauls it in. Good job by Dobko. He knew where he needed to get to. He got there. He stopped. He turned. He caught the ball. Yeah, very good route there from Dobko. And I think a very strong arm being shown off there by Dolesky. A good solid spiral to the sidelines there from the true freshman quarterback. And he did a good job of reading that play and putting it in a spot for his receiver to make the catch. As Dobko, a sure-handed one for the Dinos, brought it in for the first down. So a couple of first downs for them to end that first quarter and some positive plays offensively. If you're the Golden Bears right now, uh, it probably isn't nice to see the Dinos marching a little bit. They started this drive pretty back deep in their own territory. They've got it out to midfield, but you still have to be extremely happy, I think, with the first quarter of football. You held the Dinos uh, off the scoreboard entirely. Yeah, absolutely, and you really held them you know, off the stat sheet as far as putting up anything big offensively and uh, did a good job of really limiting them and, and frustrating them offensively. I don't think the Dinos were over the center field stripe there in the first half. Uh, as far as their offensive line of scrimmage until that last first down, and now finally inside Golden Bears territory. So a very good job from the Bears' defense, and what was shaping out to be a defensive struggle there until the last offensive series for the Golden Bears as they got that touchdown from Wojcicki. In their last five quarters, they've allowed just six points here this season for the Golden Bears. They allowed just six the entire game uh, against Manitoba, and now uh, shutting out Calgary here in the first quarter of this one. Uh, it appears to really the only problem they have right now is when that ball gets to the outside, and Calgary running a little bit of that option offense with the Lesky right now. Yeah, and that option looked good that last series, or th- this series right now. They continue to run for the Calgary Dinos, and Dolesky looked good in that first quarter. I think he did some good things. Uh, he had some situations where he might have been sacked, but did a good job of sticking in there and getting the ball to a receiver. Now the Dinos will work from the Golden Bears 51. Dolesky once again lining up with two backs in behind him. One of them, Matt Walter. And now Lombalo will move up to the left side of the line. That ball will go to Walter. No, he's going to fake it, try to come over the top, and that's off the turf. And they're unable to complete that pass, so now it will be second and ten, and then maybe a sigh of relief there from the Golden Bears D. Yeah, play action there from Dolesky. Did a pretty good job of selling that one. <laughs> Sold and, me. <laughs> and he had a Kuhorn there, but that pass was a little bit too low for the receiver, as you mentioned, just bounced it off the turf, and uh, it'll be second down and ten. But a good job there by Dolesky to sell that play action. Now they'll work from the 51 again. Second and ten, Dolesky two backs in behind him. Now Limbala will move out. To his left. Walter stays there with him. And once again, they'll fake it. Play action. They'll try to go deep down the field. And it's caught. A nice. They're going to, they're discussing it right now. Oh, that's a, that's a good catch down the line. That is a phenomenal catch there by Nathan Kuhorn. And he's going to be big time for the Calgary Dinos this afternoon without Anthony Parker, their number one receiver in the lineup. And he was uh, very good against the Saskatchewan Huskies in that opener. Really one of the few bright spots for the Dinos. And a top CFL prospect for a reason as he makes a great sideline grab. Great catch. Linesman was in a great position to see it. And now they will work 
from the 18. Dino's on the 18. They'll give it to Walter this time. He tries to cut up through the middle, and that hasn't really been there all day for uh, Calgary so far. No, that inside running play hasn't been there for really either side so far this afternoon. We saw the one run from Jarvis, yeah, so that's, that's right. been about it. As uh, Matt Walter, the only time we've seen him do anything explosive so far has been to the outside on a little pitch from Dulesky. So we'll see if we continue to see play action from the Calgary Dinos. And that's something that they ran a lot with Eric Lavich, and he was very good at that. And I don't think they'll change their game plan with the rookie quarterback in. Larry Hillary into the game defensively for Dale Stevenson. And the Dinos will work from the 16. There's a rush coming, and they've got him. Greenslade coming on the weak side, and he's able to take him down. And Greenslade's had a very good start to the season. Yeah, he's been terrific for the Golden Bears so far. In this season, like you mentioned, he came into this game with 13 tackles, fifth best in the conference for uh, Green Slade, and he gets the sack there on Dulesky as uh, a very nice defensive stop there from the Bears. So I feel it will come out and attempt to put points on the board here. This should be well within his range. We watched him in warm-up, and he was hitting them from about 45, and uh, this one will come off at about the 31. So a 31-yard field goal lined up here for I field. Wind shouldn't be much of a problem today. I wouldn't think I feel up with that one. And it is good. So the Dinos do get on the board, and we will have a 9-3 football game. And the Golden Bears offense will have an opportunity to go back to work. Should mention, with that field goal, Eiffel becomes the all-time leading scorer in U of C Dinos football history. 275 career points now. He needed only three points coming into this game to surpass Bruce Parsons as the all-time record leader. So I felt now uh, has that name in the history books, and it's all his. Nice record to have, eh? Yeah, it's a pretty good record as a field goal kicker to be the most prolific scorer in school history. So a good milestone there for the Calgary kicker. Now Marshawn will scrimmage from the 35. Three targets to the short side of the field. Now they'll put one in motion, and he comes on the near side, trying to plow through the middle with Jarvis and... Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and that would be about it. So the running game outside of one play here hasn't really been able to get going so far for the Golden Bears. And really any of the running plays that have originated inside those hash marks have gone nowhere, and we mentioned that already, but those defensive linemen, that interior line has done a good job of shutting down that run, and Matt Jarvis with nowhere to go there and no yards on that carry. Now second and ten from their own 35 for the Golden Bears. Marshawn steps back, takes a look over the middle. He's going to try to scramble up through, uh, but they got him in the pocket, and they take him down. That was uh, Lyndon Gaydosh with the tackle there, and that will force Hugh O'Neill back onto the field for the Bears. Absolutely nowhere to go there for Julian Marshawn, and as you mentioned, Gaydosh was all over the Bears' quarterback, and he was the CIS Rookie of the Year last year for a reason, did a terrific job on that defensive line for Blake Nill and company. 11.53 to go here in the opening half of football. Coming up at halftime, Doug McLean will join Evan Dom and we'll recap what we've seen so far. And what we've seen right now has led to a 9-3 lead for the Golden Bears, looking to go to 3-0 and on the season. They had a 36-28 win over UBC, and then they beat Manitoba 31-6. to This is their first game of the year here at home at Foot Field. Now O'Neill puts this one up. That will hang up there. And they'll grab it at about the 35, trying to leap a couple of tackles, but a taken down Nathan Kuhorn, who has really been Mr. Everything so far for Calgary today. Yeah, Nathan Kuhorn will bring a lot of different things to the table for the Calgary Dinos. He will return kicks, he will return punts, and obviously a very good receiver set up that field goal for the Dinos last time out with just a spectacular catch along the sidelines. was able to keep both feet in, actually, to make the catch as uh, he returns that one about seven yards after the Hugh O'Neill punt. It'll be first and ten from the 43 for Eric Dolecki. Once again with the two backs in behind him in the shotgun formation. Alan Bala moves to the right, and they'll try to play action over the middle, and that'll be a first down. Good. Good arm from Dulesky. Uh For an 18-year-old, that's a pretty good arm. Yeah, a very good throw there from Dulesky. Right out of high school, first year playing collegiate football, an 18-year-old out of Boise, Idaho. So an American quarterback in there for the Calgary Dinos, and he does a good job of firing that ball 
as they march it inside the Bears' territory. They will work from the Bears' 53. His Calgary offense struggled at the beginning of the game, but last time they were able to march down the field and put up points via an I feel field goal. And now they'll work again. Dolesky pitches it to the outside. They're going to try to get around one defender. They do, and they'll bring it up to about uh, 52. Anthony Woodson with the carry. That's the first time we've seen him touch the football today. We saw him get concussed in that opener against the Saskatchewan Hussies at McMahon Stadium. And like I alluded to, that uh, situation led to the suspension of Blake Neal. But a good carry there and a good job to toss it out to the left side. And the running back does a terrific job of carrying it inside and uh, making something out of a play that looked like it was going to be negative. Now they work from the 42. They're going to run the option again to the right. This time Dolesky's going to try to plow his way ahead. And I believe the Golden Bears stopped him before he got to the first down. That was a good final push there by Dolesky, but I don't think it was enough. No, I think he's going to be a couple of yards short, about a yard and a half short here of the first down at the Bears' 45-yard line. And I expect the Dinos to go for this one on third and just over a yard here. So... I'm sure we'll see the short yardage. That's uh, about a third and just shy of two yards. That's pretty big two yards to make up here. But the Dinos' run game has been good uh, outside of the first five minutes of this football game. Big chance here for the Bears' defense. Dolesky from the 45. He's going to run that option again, and he'll get it this time. He hangs on, and they get up to the 45. So more than they needed. Yeah, a good job there by Dolesky and a nice play call there. I like the play action pass there and the, the option to run that ball or hand it off. And he did a good job there of getting the first down as uh, the Dinos pick up a first down and a third down conversion. Dinos will work from the Bears 41, first and 10. Four receivers to his left for Dolesky. Now they're going to throw it. That just missed the intended targets uh, as, once again, Anthony Woodson, they were looking for him in the backfield. He had three receivers ahead of him to make some room for him, but they couldn't complete the pass. And we, should, we mentioned the rushing attack has been a little bit slow for the Dinos at times, but 45 yards in that first quarter from Matt Walter, so a good first 15 minutes from him for the Golden Bears rushing the football. Only 17 yards from Matt Jarvis, so that tells the story. And the majority of those came on that one big one big play. Absolutely. 16 of the 17 yards. So, 8.50 to go here in the first half. It is the Golden Bears with a 9-3 lead on the Dinos, and the Dinos will work. Here's Dolesky from about the 45. Pass over the middle, and that is picked off. Great job. And, wow, nice hands there is uh, laying out and picking that ball off. Duncan Morris, good job. As that was not an easy interception to make. No, that was a nice play by the Bears defender there. The linebacker, Duncan Morris, steps up with a big defensive stop for the Golden Bears. His first interception of the season had one INT last year for the green and gold and a big-time defensive play there. And now Julian Marchand will have an opportunity to go from work. They are deep in their own territory, but a nice play there from Duncan Morris. Now Marchand. With three options to his right. He's going to roll to his right and now come over the top. And there's a completion. And that will be a first down as it in the hands of Lane Rogers. And he's able, that's his uh, first reception of the day. And I believe there will be a roughing the passer call against the Calgary Dinos on that as well. So they'll tack on some more yards. Nice play there by Julian Marchand to roll out to his right and throw a strike to Lane Rogers. And that is the call, so that'll be a 15-yarder against the Dinos. And just like that, they're up to midfield. Yeah, good job by Julian. And that's what you look for from Julian Marchand, to get out of the pocket, to roll out, make a play with his arm, but using his feet to help him do that. And we've seen it a couple of times this afternoon, and that's something that was lacking last season for the Golden Bears at that position. 8.24 to go, second quarter, and it will be the Bears first and 10 from their own 54. Marshawn with Jarvis in behind them, three receivers to his left, and he'll go to Jarvis. Jarvis finds a little bit of room. Now Matt Jarvis up to the 50-yard line of the Dinos before he's taken down, picks up about six yards on the play, uh, one of his better runs of the day so far. Yeah, his second best run of the afternoon, and it'll be about seven, eight yards on that carry for Matt Jarvis, like we mentioned, just 18 Yards in the first half, 16 of those coming off that one rush up the middle. So uh, Matt Jarvis with a good run there. He does come out of the game, and Blaine Bartoli uh, pops in. So now Bartoli will line up in behind 
Julian Marchand under center here from the Dinos 49. Three targets to his left. Goes up the middle and Bartoli stumbles, but he's able to get close to the first down marker. Going to be just shy, about a yard shy, and the offense will remain on the field. So it's third and short for the Golden Bears, and Bartoli there tripped up in the backfield, just lunges ahead to get something positive out of that. So we'll see the first third down opportunity of the Golden for the Golden Bears of the afternoon. We saw the Dinos face third and two, and they were able to uh, pick up the yardage they needed to keep their last drive alive before the Duncan Morris interception. Now here's Marshawn, goes to the left side. That was Bartoli again, and he gets there, and that will move the sticks, and the drive remains alive with 6.59 to go here in the second quarter. Just a short run there from Bartoli, only the second time he's seen the football this afternoon. He does pick up the first down, though, by about a half a yard, so we will see the chains move. And the Golden Bears here marching a little bit after that interception from Duncan Morris. Big turning point here in the first half of the football game as Dulesky had the Dinos offense rolling. And then Duncan Morris picked them off. Roughing the passer penalty. Couple of plays. And just like that, the Golden Bears are threatening. Now Marshawn, he's going to go deep right. Riley Richardson, and he hauls it in. Riley Richardson's first catch here at Footfield of the season. And Julian Marshawn lobbed it up there, and Riley Richardson went and got it. Great job there by Riley Richardson to adjust to that football. That one really hung up for for Julian Marshawn as Richardson had to make a special catch there, about a 25-yard gain from the Golden Bears. And that's the second time this afternoon we've seen a Bears receiver do a good job of adjusting to the football and making a big-time catch. The Bears have a 9-3 lead, and they will work here. First and 10 from the Dinos 20. Marshawn with Bartoli. Still in the backfield. Jarvis on the sidelines right now. Three targets to his left for Marchand. He'll go to Bartoli up the middle. He barges ahead for a couple of yards. Almost five. Ball popped out, but it was blown down. And it will be a Golden Bears second down from about the 15-yard line. Bartoli to go on that play as the Calgary Dinos snuffed that one off. Paymont in on the tackle for the Dinos as uh, he was able to stuff that. And just a short gain there for the Bears. Five yards, though, at the 15-yard line. now. Second and five from the 15. Jarvis is now back in the ball game for the Bears. He's been on the sidelines for the last four plays. Marshawn with three targets to his right and two to the left. And he's going to go over the middle there. And Velo, ooh, he was hammered as he went to catch that ball. Reached up for it and was... Hammered down, so now we'll see Hugh O'Neill come out and try to chalk up another three points and possibly a 12-3 lead for the Golden Bears. Anthony Delorier with tight coverage there for the Calgary Dinos did a good job of coming to the football as uh, Julian Marchand threw that to the receiver and Delorier, a transfer student from SFU, and of course SFU going the NCAA route, uh, did not have to sit out a year coming to Calgary after going to Toronto Argonauts training camp this summer. Coming into the game, O'Neill was 3-for-5 on the year for a 60%. This will be his first field goal attempt of the afternoon. And that one is up, and it is good. So it's a 12-3 lead for the Golden Bears here with 5.26 to go in the first half. So another positive offensive series from the Golden Bears, and it was set up by that big-time catch by Riley Richardson at the 20-yard line of the Calgary Dinos. So... Julian Marchand getting some help from his receivers this afternoon, and it leads to some more Golden Bears points. As you mentioned, now 12-3 with a nine-point lead over the Dinos. And all that comes from uh, Duncan Morris with the big interception with the Dinos uh, pressing uh, deep in Golden Bear territory. Yeah, you turn that turnover into points, and that's key for the Bears, and they were able to do it that time out. Now Dulesky will work from his 35, and he'll go to Walter. Walter up the middle. No, he play action again, and that pass uh, dropped over the top. Uh, Dulesky's done a pretty good job of selling that run uh, so far here in the first half of the football game. Yeah, and the Calgary Don was going to use that play action pass all season long. They use it with Eric Lavich. They're going to use it with Dulesky. They're going to use it with anybody who's in there, a quarterback. And a little bit of a drop there by Dobko over the middle. A pretty good throw, though, by the quarterback. Second and ten from the 35. Five minutes to play here in the opening half. Uh, Doug McLean uh, will come in and host halftime with Evan Dom. And now Dulesky. Three to his left. And this time he holds on to it. And he's going to find some room. Dulesky up to midfield now. He's got a lot of room to run. Dulesky to the 50-45. And he's finally forced out of bounds at the 42. 
And the 18-year-old really composed. He tucks that ball, and he picks up positive yardage plus more. Great play there by the quarterback to tuck that one down. Like you mentioned, at the starting at his own 35 all the way down to about the Alberta 40-yard line. So a big-time rush there from the quarterback. And we saw some good foot speed there from him as he got outside the pocket and made that into a big-time offensive play. And a good bounce back from him after throwing that interception the last time out. He's been dangerous with his arm and his feet so far here this afternoon. And now he's going to work from the 45. And this time they will go up the middle. And that is Woodson. Woodson's going to get to the outside. Anthony Woodson. Oh, a big block. And finally they're able to take Woodson down. But he gets up to about the 20. And that's about a 20-yard gain for this Dinos offense. An absolutely huge block there by Redcop too. The Calgary wide receiver, and he's getting props from his teammates after making a big-time play to spring Woodson for about an extra 10 yards there. And a huge hole for Woodson at the line of scrimmage there. He had all sorts of daylight to run that ball, and it's now all the way down to the Alberta 20 after about a 20-yard run from the big-time running back from the Calgary Dinos. So for the third possession in a row, the Dinos offense able to march. They had a field goal and then threw an interception, and now they're going to run another quick option out to Woodson. Woodson will get uh, about five yards before he is taken down. So Woodson's been uh, pretty dynamic so far for the Dinos here this afternoon. Yeah, and Anthony Woodson is a very dynamic player. He's been plagued by injuries his entire career at the UFC, but when he's healthy and when he's in the lineup, he's a difference maker for the Dinos, and a good job there off the option again as he picks up about five yards all the way down to the Alberta 16. Second and five from the 16, Dulesky. He steps back. He's going to be thrown to his right, and that one not complete, so they will have to settle for a field goal here with 3.15 to go in the second quarter. And a good job there by the Bears defense to make that stop when they needed to. They bent there giving up a couple of big plays. Dulesky with a big-time run and Woodson with another run there for the Calgary Dinos. But the Bears make that second down stop they need to as it'll set up an I failed field goal here from about the 23-yard line as he looks to cut into this lead. His last one was about from the 31. And this will uh, make it a six-point lead for the Golden Bears should he connect from 23 yards. I feel up. And that one is straight through the uprights. And it will be a six-point lead here with two minutes and 59 seconds to play here. And the Golden Bears offense will get the ball back. Concerned at all that it's been three straight possessions that Calgary's able to uh, march down the field here against the Bears defense. They've done a good job of moving the football, but they haven't scored majors yet in this football game. And that's the key to winning any contest. And Good job there by the Bears on second down. They'll give them credit after giving up a couple of big plays to just give up that field goal. And field goals aren't going to beat you. Uh, major major scores will. And so far the Bears have done a good job of limiting the Dinos. And when it was crunch time there, they came up with a big-time play. But, yeah, Calgary's starting to move the football effectively with Delasky at quarterback. And the only major so far in the game, uh, Mike Wojcicki uh, catching the ball from Julian Marchand uh, back in the first quarter in the Golden Bears uh, with the only touchdown of the football game so far, and they will go to work from the 35. Coming up at halftime, Doug McLean will slide back in and host your halftime here. Golden Bears football against the Dinos. The Dinos, number four in the country. The Bears, number seven. And Marshawn at his 30 in the shotgun. Jarvis to his right. Three receivers to his left. And now Marat will move in and they'll hand it off. This is Jarvis. Jarvis with a little bit of room. Matt Jarvis, he's going to get the first down. And he gets up to about the 50. So Matt Jarvis finding some room to the outside. And really that's the only place any team's been able to run the ball so far today. It's uh, been to the outside. No room in the box right now. Yeah, not a lot of room in the box. We've only seen a couple of good rounds inside the hash marks this afternoon. And a good job by Jarvis to get to the outside and pick up the first down for the Golden Bears. About a 15-yard gain. For the Bears running back in his third good run of this afternoon. But really those three runs have been all she wrote for him as far as rushing the ball. 2.43 to go before halftime. It's first and ten from their own 50 for the Golden Bears. Marshawn in the shotgun. Jarvis in behind him. And now they'll give the ball to Jarvis. He tries to go up the middle. Keeps those legs moving and picks up maybe two yards on the play. So it'll be about second and eight. Uh, for the Golden Bears offense. Yeah, about two yards for Jarvis on that play. Paymont 
And uh, Hurl in there for the Calgary Dinos with the uh, tackle. And Hurl, we should mention, leads the Canada West with 17 tackles coming into this weekend. And he was dynamic for the Dinos in the season opener against Saskatchewan. He had 10 tackles in that contest. Now from their own 52, Marshawn with a couple of big completions so far here. One to Richardson. We saw that come down the near sidelines. Now he's in trouble. He scrambles away from one tackler. Three, four more come in, and they are able to uh, gobble him up. Nowhere to go as Paymont uh, put on the finishing touches, and now Hugh O'Neill will have to come out and punt this ball away with two minutes and 11 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Travis Payne with the initial pressure in the Alberta backfield there, and like you mentioned, Paymont just sort of cleans up the scraps there and takes Marshawn down to the turf and it'll force a punt on the sack from the Calgary Dinos and a good defensive stand from them and they've rounded into form here in this second quarter. Back awaiting the punt, Chris Dobko and Nathan Kuhorn. Kuhorn's had a pretty good first half uh, so far here for the Dinos. O'Neill will kick this one away from about his own 35. And that one, not the best punt we've seen from Hugh O'Neill. And they'll grab it and take it out of bounds at about the 45. So not bad field position here for the Dinos, depending on uh, what the flags were on the far side of the field. Yeah, flags flying right in front of the Calgary bench there. As, uh, not a great punt there from Hugh O'Neill. End over end. Landed at about the 44, 45-yard line and just bounced out and uh, out of bounds there. Not much of a return on the play. No yards against the Golden Bears, uh, along with uh, unnecessary roughness, I believe, will be the call. So that'll march the Dinos inside Bears territory. Defense will have to come up big here with just a minute and 48 on the clock for the Dinos to work and possibly move uh, within range for Ifield to come out and look for his third field goal here of the opening half of football as the Golden Bears look to improve to 3-0, and and right now they've got a six-point lead. Plenty of time here for Calgary to march this football they're going to be inside Bears territory, like we mentioned, after the penalties are sorted out as the referee just marching it out right now. And it's going to be all the way to the Alberta 42-yard line, it looks like. So excellent field position to start this drive for the Dinos as they look to cut into this lead and with a major score, take the lead in a halftime. And after you know being outplay here, uh, you know they're in a situation where they can bounce right back and take the lead. The Dinos have uh, moved the ball extremely well in their last three possessions, and all of them started uh, a lot deeper than they are right now, as they will go first and 10 from the Golden Bears, 43. The Lesky now move up under center, has Walter in the backfield behind him, and he could be in trouble trying to scramble away, but it's not going to work as John Mark Jones gets in there, and he's able to tie him up for the loss. And that's the second time we've seen John Mark Jones in the backfield this afternoon. We saw Dulesky do a good job on the first time Jones was back there to get the ball away to a receiver and avoid the sack, but unable to do so there as John Mark Jones picks up the sack and a loss of about five yards there for the Dinos, and it'll make it second and 15. Second and 15 from above the Dinos, 47. Dulesky from the shotgun. Three targets to his right. Takes his time. Has a lot of time. Has a lot of field in front of him, too. He's going to go deep. And that one is over the head of the intended target, Stephen Lombala. And a decent job there by the Bears' defense. A good job there by the defense, but not a great read from the quarterback. He had Nathan Kuhorn in the end zone wide open on the far side. He also had a ton of room in front of him as well. Yeah, he had some running space, too. But he decides to throw that ball up looking for Stephen Lombala, the running back, and unable to hook up with him as it'll force a punting situation here as the Dinos kind of spoil that good field position and go two and out. So the defense holds, and coming out, Aaron Ifield. He'll punt it away from about midfield. David Court and Jess Valu back at their own goal line awaiting this. A minute and 18 seconds to play in the first half. There's the punt. It's a, it's a good one. It's getting away from Valu. He'll grab it in his own end zone. And now he'll cut wide, trying to get out of there. He will, or will he, right at the goal line. Good battle there, right at the goal line. 
uh, for Jeff Valu. Calgary will scrim, or the Bears, I should say, will scrimmage from their 20 yard line, though, uh, after that punt sailed into the end zone. And of course, you're allowed the opportunity in CIS football to, to return out. that out. So the Bears, uh, Jess Valu took that and just uh, got it outside the end zone, but it'll be at the 20 yard line after they move it up. Well, the minute and six of March, where do they have to get to to be in Hugh O'Neill range here? Uh, they got to get to about, I would say, about the 40 yard line here against the wind today uh, to give Hugh O'Neill an opportunity. Now, Marshawn will. Talk- Throw it to Jarvis on the outside. Jarvis tried to cut back in, and he'll pick up about five yards on the carry, as we have seen him be most effective to the outside. 17 yards in the first quarter and picked up probably another 15 here in the second. Yeah, a, a steady performance from uh, Matt Jarvis. Nothing exceptional, nothing eye-popping, but he's been uh, responsible with the football and hasn't coughed it up yet this afternoon, and that'll be uh, big for them, obviously, turnovers. Have not factored into this yet for the Bears. Second and four from their own 26. Clock ticking down. About 40 seconds left to go here in the first half. Marshawn up the middle again to Jarvis. He tried to spin away. And he gains a couple of yards. But they will be short with about 38 seconds uh, left to go in the half. And Hugh O'Neill will be called upon once again. Yeah, so we'll he- see Hugh O'Neill after his last punt, which was a little bit of a an up and down end to end that got just to about the 45 yard line of the Calgary Dinos and we'll see Chris Dobko out there at about his 45 to return this punt and if he gets a good return off here it'll set up a possibility to maybe get this into Eiffeld range with the wind at his back as well uh, at late in this first half. Doug McLean coming up at halftime with your uh, halftime show we've got 30 seconds left to play here. O'Neill. Looking to improve on his uh, last one, the last one end over end. And I uh, didn't get near as far as he's been averaging on the year, which is 39 yards. Now, O'Neill, he'll get under this one, and that one will hang up there. That's a good punt, and they'll take it. Stobko at about the 45, tries to find a hole, puts his head down, and he is tackled there. So 8.9 seconds to play here in the first half, and the Dinos offense marches back onto the field one more time. They trail by six. So we'll see if the Calgary Dinos like to throw a couple of balls up here and see what can happen or if they'll just take it into halftime down by six points here. I would expect them to throw something up here and see what they can do and see what sort of play they can come out with late in this first half. The 18-year-old quarterback, Delusky, seeing if he can work a little magic here late in the second quarter. Delusky. Once again, fakes the handoff. He's going to cut out to the right. Clock ticking down. He'll throw one deep down the field. And that one threw some hands. An incomplete pass. They had an opportunity to maybe go up there and uh, pick that ball off. Uh, Jay Hetherington was right in the mix. He had eight interceptions last year. uh, But it didn't matter. As long as that one got knocked down, there's only a second left to play here. Nathan Kuhorn, the intended receiver there for the Calgary Dinos. And it would have been interesting if he would have hauled that one in. They would have set up a field goal opportunity, but just outside of his fingertips, like you mentioned, double coverage. Hetherington in there on the coverage, and a good job there by the Bears to sniff that one out. Second and 10 from their own 49 for the Dinos. And they will just kneel down, and that will do it for the first half of football here at Foot Field. The uh, Golden Bears looking to improve to 3-0 and on the season, and they head into the room at halftime. All right, welcome back, everyone. This is- Second half action, Dustin Nielsen and Evan Dom, and it is the Bears with a 12-6 lead. And uh, they will get the ball here to start the third quarter. They got Valu back there, along with Ralph. And Ifield will kick it off. Bears, six-point cushion here. Uh, but they do... Give up a little bit. Uh, as far as time of possession goes and overall yardage, Calgary has small advantages there. That ball will come to Jess Valu at his own 10. Now he's going to work it up towards the 20. Tries to barge through. Gets it up to about the 23-yard line before he is taken down. And uh, Julian Marchand will head back out onto the field for the Golden Bears. Pretty even first half, though, from both sides. I think, like you mentioned, slight edge in the statistical battle to the Calgary Dinos. As far as uh, first downs go, they had 11 to Alberta's 8. 
and a time of possession like you mentioned, but they really came on in that second quarter and did a good job of moving the ball, and minus that interception from Dolesky, were the better team. First and 10 from their own 23, and Marchand to his right now takes a look, has an open target, and they're able to uh, hang on to that ball. Flag did go. It's Porter Brown. That was his second catch of the ball game. We'll see what the call is here. Should mention on the out of town scoreboard, Manitoba up 7-3 on the UBC Thunderbirds. So Manitoba looking for their first victory of the season coming in 0-2. They got stomped by the Rams in the season opener in week one. And then they got stomped last <laughs> week in Winnipeg at home against the Golden Bears. So they're still looking for some positives there. Right, it will be first and five here after the five-yard penalty. First and five for the Golden Bears from their own 28. Marshawn in the shotgun, three receivers to his right. And he'll hand this ball off. They'll try to barge up through the middle. And Bartoli able to get a couple of yards. And he gets fallen on heavily by one of the offensive linemen. Uh, but he gets that first down. And they'll move the sticks here, uh, which is more than you can say about either team in the beginning of the first quarter. Yeah, the first quarter was slow. And the offensives didn't look like they were in sync either side, really. And then that second quarter, I guess towards the end of the first quarter, we saw the Bears come on and they got a touchdown, of course. But to that second quarter, the offense has started to click a little bit more, and a good job there by Bartoli to pick up the first down on the six-yard run. Now Marshawn fakes the handoff, play action over the middle, and that's going to be another first down, and a good job there, as I believe it was Lane Rogers who hauled that one in, and if it was, that'd be his second catch of the afternoon. I believe it was Porter Brown. Oh, Porter Brown it. on the other side of the field there. Yes, that's right, 86. Hauls it in there for the Golden Bears. A good throw from Julia Marchand over the middle on a face mask against the Calgary Dinos. Keep it moving. So they'll tack on a little bit more, and that's something the Bears did a pretty good job of um, in the first half as far as penalties against. Uh, I should say the Calgary Dinos did a pretty good job of just one for 15 yards. The Bears was seven for 55, so penalty battle. Uh, on the edge of the Calgary Dino so far this afternoon, and we saw that all last season with the Bears taking penalties, but uh, they are the recipients of that positive yardage there after Calgary takes the face mask. First and 10 for the U of A from the Calgary 49. Marshawn in the shotgun, and they'll hand this ball off again. Bartoli trying to barge ahead, and that ball, did it pop loose? Oh, he just broke a tackle and was able to get through a little bit further. Not a bad run there by Bartoli. And so we haven't seen Jarvis here in this half. He is on the sidelines right here just tying his shoe right now. Good run there from Bartoli, though. Like we, like you mentioned, he broke a tackle. Looked like he was going to be down at about the line of scrimmage, but he made it into a positive one and got about five yards there for the Golden Bears to make it second and manageable. Second and five from the Calgary 44 for Marchand in the shotgun, and that one's going to be blown down. Just some movement from the Golden Bears offensive line, and that'll be a procedure penalty, and that'll bring the ball back. All sorts of mix-ups there for the Golden Bears. We saw Brown way out in front, Valu. Already in the, in the Calgary secondary there before the ball was snapped. So some miscommunication for the Golden Bears. As they'll march it back here and it'll be second down. So we'll get back to second and ten. So the extra effort there by Bartoli negated now by the penalty. Second and ten from the Calgary 49. Porter Brown with a couple of catches here so far in the third quarter. Now Marshawn steps back, goes deep down the left side, and there's the flag. It does come as Riley Richardson was looking for it on the far side of the field, and he tried to turn around, but he was interfered with. Steve Truzak on the coverage there for the Calgary Dinos, and he will get hit with that pass interference call as he was all over that one. You mentioned it, Calgary, I believe, took one penalty in the first half of the football game, and now three is essentially uh, March the Golden Bears uh, down the field. No, waving it off now. A little bit of a conference there after the play, and like you mentioned, no flag, so that'll be uh, that for the Golden Bears. That was second down, so it'll bring out Hugh O'Neill and the punting unit. And O'Neill will come out and try to pin Calgary deep. He managed to do that pretty good in the uh, first quarter of the ball game as Calgary uh, had poor field position to start their first three drives, and then they got a little more comfortable later on in that first half, and they started to march the ball uh, pretty comfortably. What did you think of that call? 
picking up the flag. I think they were saying that cat, that one was uncatchable. I believe that's what they were ruling. I'm not sure there. Uh, looked like pass interference to me. He got in the way and cut off the uh, path of the football there. Steve Trusak did for the Calgary Dinos. So uh, disappointing there for the Bears, but Hugh O'Neill now out to punt. He will uh, punt it away from about his own 50. He had seven punts in the first half of the ball game. And he punts it away. That will be caught at about the 10-yard line for the Dinos. And nowhere to go as once again the Golden Bears, good job all afternoon of getting downfield in a hurry. And uh, Calgary's return game has been non-existent for the most part. Yeah, another good job there from the Golden Bears of getting some good coverage downfield. Johansson down and makes the tackle almost exactly where uh, Dobko picked that football off. After he O'Neill punted it down. So good job again. Downfield by the special teams unit as they pin Calgary deep. Uh, scrimmaging inside their own 10 yard line. Now Dolesky will go to work from his own nine. First and ten for the Dinos. And he fakes the handoff. That pass was gunned in there. But a little behind the receiver. And it will be second and ten. Uh, Dolesky, pretty good arm for a true freshman quarterback here for the Dinos. Yeah, he's shown that off a number of times this afternoon, trying to fire those balls into some tight windows, but uh, unable to hook up there on that pass. But he's shown uh, glimpses of being a good quarterback for the Calgary Dinos and a guy who appears to have a lot of raw talent. Getting an opportunity right now with Glavich out of the lineup, and they'll go from their own nine. Second and ten. And this time they will hand it off right up the middle to get a couple of yards, but not near enough for the first down. And I feel will be forced back out onto the field to uh, punt this one away. So the Golden Bears should get exceptional field position here with uh, Eifeld going to be punting either from just inside his end zone or it'll be interesting to see if they can see say, the safety like they did in the first half. Maybe give up a couple of points again. This is eerily similar to the way the first quarter of the football game started. And if he does, it would be a 14-6 lead for the Bears. I think at this stage in the football game, you give up the points and you take the field position if you're the Calgary Dinos. So we'll see if that's what they do here. Court and Valu, just in case, are about midfield. Awaiting this punt, should I feel decide to boot it away? And no. He will give up the two points. So you can chalk up a couple more points. That's a couple of safeties so far in this game for the Golden Bears. And they've got a 14-6 lead here with 11.33 to go. And that pushes the lead to uh, eight points at this point in the football game. Yeah, so still a one-possession game for the Calgary Dinos as well. So a pretty easy call there from them to concede that safety and push the Bears back and make them start inside their own territory. Uh, they would have had excellent field position probably about the Calgary 45-40, depending on the return, but we will see the Golden Bears offense out there again after a good defensive stand by uh, the Golden Bears as the Dinos went 2-0 and out there. Uh, the defense uh, comes up pretty big. Uh, the offense, last time getting a lot of help, uh, Calgary undisciplined uh, last time down the field with a couple of penalties. Almost a third penalty as well, but they picked up the flag on the pass interference call. And now this ball will be uh, booted away by Calgary. Looks like a good crowd here at Footfield this afternoon for the uh, celebration of the centenary here for the Golden Bears football squad. The entire west side here at Footfield is packed. is packed, like you mentioned, and uh, the east side there, a number of fans uh, taking in this football game, a chilly one here in Edmonton today, about 7 or 8 degrees with uh, a wind out of the south, but uh, not a bad day for a football game. Jess Valu and Randon Ralph back awaiting the kick. And Jess Valu will pick this one up at his 10. He's got a little bit of room. He'll get to the 15 now, to the 20, trying to find a hole. And he's able to get through to about the 27-yard line. So Julia Marchand will come out, and they'll start this a little bit better than they started their first possession of the second half. 14-6 lead for the Golden Bears. Yeah, not a bad return there from Jess Valu, too. About a 17-yard pickup from him after the kick from Eifeld after the safety. So the Bears will scrimmage uh, just shy of their own 30-yard line here. And... Uh, Julian Marchand comes in to quarterback the Bears, of course, and uh, Matt Jarvis back in at running back for the green and gold. Marchand over 100 yards on the day. He was just shy of 100 yards in the first half, and he's picked those yards up here to start the third quarter. Under center, he'll step back, drops it off. 
and maybe maybe a yard on the play uh, up the middle by Jarvis. Not much there for Matt Jarvis uh, on the inside there, and like you mentioned, he had just shy of 50 yards in the first half, so a, a solid f- uh, solid first 30 minutes for him. Uh, wasn't really anything spectacular from the running back position, but did a solid job averaging 4.9 yards per carry, and uh, nothing doing there, though, after just one yard. He's Evan Dom. I'm Dustin Nielsen. It's a 14-6 Golden Bears lead, and they'll go second and nine from their own 29. Marshawn now back in the pocket, throws it across, has a target. That's Marat trying to break a tackle, still fighting, and they finally corral him and take him down. Or it was Lane Rogers, rather. And uh, Rogers tried his mightiest to uh, get away from that tackle, but did not get the job done. Good job there by Ty Noble of bringing Rogers down to the turf for the Golden Bears and forcing... A punting situation here from Hugh O'Neill and a short route there from the Bears receiver as uh, he was really nowhere near the first down. Had to break that tackle, but give Noble credit. He made the, the takedown and forced the Bears here to send Hugh O'Neill out onto the field again. O'Neill out for his ninth punt of the afternoon. Majority of them have been uh, pretty good. He had one that he would like back for sure. And he'll kick this one away at about his own 20-25 yard line. Oh, and he almost was blocked, and they did get a piece of it, and now it's just going to roll to the midfield, and it will be picked up there. They'll hop on it, and no yards. And, uh, boy, good pressure right there from Calgary, busting through the line. Good job by the Calgary Dinos, like you mentioned, to get in there and force the block, and a little bit of a tip there as Hugh O'Neill punch just squibs into Calgary territory, and once we sort out this play, which will be about a five-yard no yards call since the uh, ball was on the turf. Uh, we will see the Dinos scrimmaging inside the Bears' territory here uh, on their uh, second opportunity of the second half here offensively. We'll I'll have to see if the defense can get it done. Third quarter hasn't been uh, that bad so far this season for the Golden Bears. Uh, they put up 21 points in that third quarter against uh, BC and also put points on the board uh, last week against Manitoba in the third quarter. Also be very good field position here for Calgary. Yeah, it'll be a 15-yard variety. Sorry on the no yards call there for Calgary. So, yeah, like you mentioned, very good field position here for them as Dulesky looks to get his first major of the afternoon. Dulesky with two backs there right beside him, and they're going to pitch it to the outside. Anywhere to go, uh, maybe, as Limbala gets around a couple of bodies and uh, barges his way up for about four or five yards on the play. It looked like they had him in trouble, but he made something out of nothing. Really nice play there by Steven Lombala to make a couple of Golden Bears miss. Good lateral movement there from the second-year running back for Calgary. And like you mentioned, it looked like they had him dead in the water, about three yards behind the line of scrimmage, but he turns it into a positive one and picks up five yards. Second and five from the 36 for the Dinos. Dulesky in the shotgun, three targets to his right. And Walter in behind him. Now Dulesky with a little bit of time tries to find a hole. He does find a hole. And he barges his way up and over. And he will pick up the first down there. As Dulesky, not bad decision making there from the 18-year-old. No, good job there by the quarterback to recognize that hole and jump up. And understand that they only needed five yards for a first down there. And he got just enough. Green slayed in on the tackle for the Golden Bears as he was unable to keep the quarterback from getting that first down. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. The Dinos marching. They trail by eight. And Dulesky, once again, two backs there with him in the shotgun. And this time they'll go up the middle to Walter, and they are able to uh, tie him up. Uh, but he does pick up a couple yards, maybe three, three, four yards on the play. Not a bad run there from Matt Walter and uh, getting some positive yardage for him. And he was actually outrushed in that first half uh, compared to Matt Jarvis, only 47 yards, did average 9.4 a carry, though, for the Calgary Dinos. And it'll be interesting if they go back to him a little bit heavier here in the second half. We didn't see a ton of them in that uh, second quarter. Second and five. And they'll have a timeout. Dulesky decides to call a timeout. And the Bears' defense here bending a little bit, but hoping not to break. They haven't given up a touchdown in six quarters, at least six quarters so far here after holding Manitoba to just six points and holding Calgary to six points in the first half of this ball game. And even in that UBC game against the Thunderbirds in Vancouver, they did a very good job defensively, and really only in the fourth quarter did the T-Birds generate anything offensively with 14 points. But aside from that, the Golden Bears have played um, a lot of football this season, and they've done a good job defensively of keeping teams off the scoreboard. 
So uh, we'll see if they can t continue that here. Uh, Calgary only mustering two field goals so far this afternoon. And, and the Bears have bent, but they haven't bro uh, broken so far. And uh, we saw that especially in the second quarter where Calgary had some glorious opportunities. And it looked like they were marching it all the way to the end zone, but the Bears did a good job of breaking things up, including that interception, of course, in the second quarter. Duncan Morris getting his hands on that ball in the second quarter from around this same area on the field. Now Dolesky. 8.14 to go in the quarter. They're down by eight points. And they will work second and five from the Golden Bears' 24-yard line. He's got the instructions after calling the timeout. Walter in the backfield by himself. Now Dolesky going to step back, looking to pass, looking to go to the right. And that's picked off by the Golden Bears. And they'll have some room to run it. And a good job stepping in and taking that ball away. Jay Hetherington. And a flag flies at the end, but Hetherington read that play nicely. And once again, the Bears' defense comes up big. Jason Hetherington sniffed that one out and made a great play there defensively for the Golden Bears. And Dolesky picked off for the second time this afternoon. And no surprise who it is, it's Jason Hetherington. Led the nation last year in interceptions with eight. And a big-time play there for the Bears' defense. That's his second of the season this year as well. So two picks in three games for Hetherington. And once again, the offense will have an opportunity to add to this eight-point lead with about eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Marshawn in the shotgun from his own 41. So Hetherington not only picked it off, but he got them some yardage as well. Blitz coming. They're going to go over the middle. And that will be Lane Rogers, and he is able to hang on to that ball, so he'll pick up a couple of quick yards there with the pressure coming on quarterback Julian Marchand. Yeah, Julian Marchand just with a good job to get that ball off quickly and find an open receiver. Not a big-time game for the Bears, but certainly better than a loss in the backfield, so a good job by the quarterback to recognize that blitz from the Calgary Dinos and get that ball away off in a hurry. Gained four yards on the pass to Rogers. It'll be second and six from their 45. Marshawn in the shotgun. He'll have three targets to his right. He's going to look to his right. Now back to the left. Finds a little bit of room. Marshawn, is he going to run for the first down? He's going to try. And he gets there. That's first down territory for Julian Marshawn. And that's why those legs come in so handy when he can't find a target downfield. Absolutely a great play there by Julian Marshawn to pull that football down and make something happen with his legs and get that first down for the Golden Bears. And that's the sort of thing we didn't see a whole lot of last year from the quarterback position. Uh, Quade Armstrong, not the most fleet of foot. And uh, Julian Marchand certainly showing off his jets there to pick up the first down. First and 10 from the Golden Bears, 52. Marchand, and they'll be offside on the play. And they'll break a tackle. Here goes Rogers. He's going to pick up about 14 on the play. And a nice play there is once again, Marchand and Rogers, a little bit of chemistry coming in here right now. Good job there by Lane Rogers to break that tackle. And get uh, first down yardage. Was an offside on Calgary. And the offense uh, moving the ball here rather nicely to uh, start the second half. Yeah, they've done a good job of taking advantage of that turnover too here. Getting a couple of first downs. And that's important. Keep that momentum going on your side after that interception from Jason Hetherington. And they've done that with two pivotal first downs. Marshawn in the shotgun from the Dinos 44. First and 10 for the Golden Bears. Has Jarvis behind him. Rogers to his left. He's been hooking up with Rogers a couple of times here. They'll hand it off to Jarvis. Jarvis looking for a hole. He'll get to the outside. And he picks up maybe a yard or two on the play. As he uh, got as far as he could before having to turn that one upfield. Good pursuit there from the Calgary Dinos on the edge there. As so they'll, get, uh, they'll give him a two-yard gain on that play. But uh, Steve Truzak with a good job of closing there, as well as Getty for the Dinos, as they uh, minimize the damage there on the ground. It will be second and eight on the 42. Just over six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Dustin Nielsen alongside Evan Dom. And Marshawn with Jarvis behind him. Works from the shotgun. Rogers and Valu to his left. Marshawn steps back. Has a little bit of time now. He's going to try to go deep over the middle. And that... Misses everybody. Looked as though the intended receiver was Jess Valu, uh, but Valu wasn't going to get to that ball. Nobody was going to get to that ball, and it falls incomplete, so Hugh O'Neill back onto the field. Nobody really close to that football from Julian Marchand. Like you mentioned, the intended receiver 
for the Golden Bears was Jess Falou, but uh, not really close to him, about 10, 15 yards away from him. Getty was the closest player to that one, the Calgary Dinos defender, but uh, it was a good 10 yards away from him as well, so it just sort of fell harmlessly to the turf. O'Neill will punt it away. Waiting back there for it is Kuhorn. All by himself, O'Neill will kick this away from about midfield. 5.40 to go in the third quarter. O'Neill's got it. He'll have time to get this one away, and that is a Pretty good punt. Kuhorn will grab it and step out at about the 17, I believe, right around the 15. So not a not a bad effort there from Hugh O'Neill. Pretty good kick there by O'Neill to angle that one of the sidelines. And Kuhorn really had no opportunity to return that football as his momentum carried him out of bounds. And they'll mark it down, like you mentioned. 16? 16, 17 yard line for Calgary. Oh, so you know, if the Golden Bears defense can step up here, uh, maybe look at in safety territory again. Yeah, they're racking up the points on the safety. Uh, already, we've already seen two of those this afternoon here for the Golden Bears. Now Dolesky works from his own 16. Fake the pitch outside, hands it up the middle, and they'll get a few yards on the play, about five yards, as they went to Lombala up the middle. is coming pretty handy for this offense. Today. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Lombala this afternoon, not a whole lot of Matt Walter in the second half. He only had five touches in the first. And uh, probably not enough if you're looking to get that running back involved in this football game heavily. He had some good rushes in that first half, but we haven't seen a ton of them here in the second. We've seen more of Woodson and Lombala. Second and five from their own 21 for the UFC Dinos. Now they're going to run that option outside. And trying to hang on to it was Dulesky, uh, but he did not get the Well, be close. Uh, maybe he did get there. It was second and five. Let's see where they mark it. It's going to be close. It will be close, yes. I believe they'll take the chains. Yes, they will bring the chains out, so they'll run those across the field from the far sideline. and A lot of decision-making in, in an 18-year-old true freshman quarterback here, running a lot of these option plays for him. He's looked good, and it's a lot of responsibility on the quarterback to put him in a position where he has to make a decision, uh, a split-second decision, and I think he's passed the test so far. He's had some interceptions. Um, that's been his downfall so far this afternoon as uh, they will pick up the first down. No, it's just shy. Oh, just shy. Just shy, yeah. Just We're talking inches. Maybe not even inches. Maybe just an inch, but it's just shy. So uh, they'll, they they want to go for it. I mean, if Golden Bears could get a stop here, this would be huge. As we've got just over four and a half minutes to go in the quarter, and this would give their offense amazing field position. But like I said, they just need a little bit of a push ahead here for the Dinos, you, and this will be a first down. you got to get this first down in Canadian football with the linemen. A yard off. Uh, if you don't, that's a major failing for the Calgary Dinos. Let's see what they can do. Third and one. Third and an inch from the 26, and they plow ahead. And that will get the job done. And they'll get a fresh set of downs and work from just inside their own 30 here as they trail by eight to the Golden Bears. And we were talking about the Calgary quarterback, of course, uh, Dulesky. And I think he's been impressive thus far this afternoon, aside from those two interceptions. But... Uh, as a young quarterback, he's done a good job under that option sort of play and some play action that's looked very good for the Calgary Dinos, and that's something they will continue to bring to the table. Uh, he has a lot of weapons around him, though, to make him look good. Dolesky from the shotgun, fakes the handoff to Walter, turns around, is going to take a look downfield, has a target down there. They wanted a flag, and now they'll get one from the far side of the field. They weren't going to get it from the man in the middle, uh, but they go to the far outside line judge will toss the flag. Penalty uh, will be against the Golden Bears, of course, pass interference. Kuhorn, the intended receiver, and he got tied up at about the Bears' 50-yard line. So that uh, will march Calgary and get him a first down, a new set of downs. And they have a brief discussion again, and it will be pass interference on the Golden Bears. And roughing the passer as well. Oh, wow. So that's a big one. As uh, It's going to move things quite a ways. Jerry Friesen, none too pleased about those two penalties against his squad. It's a shame because the defense has played pretty good here so far in the third quarter. Yeah, the defense has done well, and we saw that big interception for Jason Hetherington. But, uh, you know, a couple of penalties like this, big-time penalties that will march. Right the midfield. Calgary, yeah, almost to the midfield stripe here, right at their own 54-yard line, 53-and-a-half. So, big-time 
penalties against the Golden Bears here and it's, uh, they continue to allow Calgary here to stay in this football game. It's still only an eight-point game. First and ten from the 53 for the Dinos after the two penalties taken by the Golden Bears. Now Daleski under center. Once again fakes the handoff, spins out. Greenslade's got him and he takes him down. Tyler Greenslade not letting Daleski get away from him that time. And once again, you know, it's happened all afternoon. The defense will give up a big play, then they'll come back with one. They give up penalties, then they come back with a big play again. Yeah, that's a big play for the defense. Like you've mentioned, they've bounced back all afternoon long after giving up a big play again. So taking a couple of undisciplined penalties. So a good job there by Greenslade to get in the backfield and wrap Daleski up. And he had absolutely nowhere to go with that football. It will be second and 15 from the Dinos, 48. Daleski in the shotgun. Empty backfield there. He's got six options. Four of them to his right. He's going to try to run the draw up the middle. And they'll haul him down. And a good job there. Green Slade got in the mix on that one again as well as Joel Hartman. And they double team him and take him down. So the defense holds after the penalties. And they will get the ball back. Daleski really only gets back to the original line of scrimmage. As uh, he just tucked that one down pretty quickly and ran with it. And... Greenslade was all over it, as well as Hartman, as they were both in on the tackle there. And the Golden Bears escape again after taking those two penalties on the same play. And it appears Eifeld will just punt this one away for the Dinos. Valu and Quartz uh, back at about their own 10-yard, uh, waiting the Eifeld punt. And he will kick it away. It's a good punt. And that one will come to Court. Court grabs it at his own 10. Thought about going up the sideline. Now cuts back to the middle. And still going. Gets up to the 25 before they grab him. Still fighting. And they will stop him at about the 25. So not a bad return. Really made something out of nothing there. Yeah, good job there by Court on a nice punt from Eifeld. He put it in right at about the 10-yard line. Close to the sidelines there. So uh, making something out of nothing there for the Golden Bears on the return. For the most part. Two and a half to go. Third quarter, Dustin Nielsen, Evan Dom. We are at foot field. Golden Bears start the year 2-0 and on the road, looking to go 1-0 and at home and 3-0 and on the season. Julian Marchand, just over 100 yards passing today. He'll take this in the shotgun formation from about their own 25. First and 10 actually from the 26 is what it will go into the books as. Now Marchand tries to come deep, corner out. Oh, and it just could not get there as uh, laying out for it was Wojcicki, who has a touchdown in this football game. The only touchdown in the football game, but he couldn't get there. Just a little bit underthrown there from Julian Marchand on the timing route to Wojcicki. And a good job, though, by the receiver to try and sprawl out and make that catch just a couple of feet out of his reach as uh, Marchand had to release that one a little bit quickly. Second and ten from the 26. Bears offense trying to march down the field here and add to an eight-point lead. Marchand. At his own 20 in the shotgun. Jarvis to his right. He'll block for him. Marshawn over the middle. And the intended receiver fell. Flag flies. And this one might be going in the Golden Bears' favor. Pass interference. Oh, they're going to discuss it, but they did. That was a little bit of a soft call, I think. Yeah. I think it was more of a slip than a pass interference. That's what it looked like, there. did it not? Yeah, it just looked like he was going back for the football and... Feet sort of just came out from underneath them. And they're going to talk about it again. And oh. it will be a penalty against Calgary. Pass interference on the Dinos. So uh, penalty brigade continues here for the uh, Dinos in the third quarter. A little bit of a break there for the Bears on that call as they will pick up the first down. As the referees continue to talk here at about the 35-yard line. And they finally moved the chains. Yeah, it took a little while, but it'll be uh, first and ten from about the 35. And any time the offense remains on the field, that clock continues to tick down. And they still have an eight-point lead against the Dinos. Defense has looked good this season, today included. Now Marshawn from his own 35. In the shotgun, Jarvis behind him. Three targets to his left, two on the near side of the field, including Wojcicki, who has a touchdown here. This afternoon. Now Marshawn goes to Jarvis. Jarvis, blockers in front of him. He picks up five yards and scampers up. Gets about six or seven on the play. Uh, He had a good front and right ahead of him, and he made the most of it. Yeah, a good blocking front there from the Golden Bears, like you mentioned. Made a nice shield there for the running back to get some positive yardage there. Turned it into a good run, too. 
Nine-yard pickup for Jarvis, and initially it looked like he was going to be snuffed out for a short game, but those good blocks set up that run. A minute and 20 to play, third quarter. Marshawn moves up. Under center here, he's got Bartoli now in the backfield. Three receivers to his left, goes to Bartoli. He's going to try to plow ahead, looking for the first down, and that will be pretty close. We'll see where they mark it. I think that might be enough. I don't know. It's going to be close here. It'll be depending on the spot. It yeah. looks like they're going to give him a pretty generous. Oh, very generous. Oh, that's going to be, yeah, that'll be a first down. Yeah, definitely a first down. Boy, I don't know if he got wow. that, that far in that forward motion, but that'll be a first down. Yeah, that was a very generous spot from the officiating crew, and they don't even have to bring the chains out there as the Golden Bears pick up the first down on that play. We're in the final minute of the third quarter. It'll be uh, first and ten from their own 46 for Marshawn and the Bears. Riley Richardson to the near sideline. Marshawn takes a look over the middle. He's got a man. It's Rogers, And that'll be about a gain of three on the play. And it'll be second and seven here uh, late in the third. Marshawn just checks down there and throws it to Rogers right over the middle. A short pickup for the Golden Bears there, but a positive play nonetheless from Marshawn. As he's looked pretty solid this afternoon, I'd have to say, as far as controlling the football and not throwing the ball into some bad spots. We saw in that first quarter a couple of close yes, calls. Yes, very close. Wyatt Getty, but aside from those two plays, he's looked pretty good. Marshawn at about his own 50. Fakes the handoff, takes a look. Looking over the middle, Rogers. No, he did not hang on to it. He went up for it. Was triple teamed, essentially. Got some hands on it but cannot haul it in, and that'll bring it up and be third and six, and Hugh O'Neill marches back onto the field. Good play there by the Calgary defense to sniff that one out, and a good play by Anthony Delorier to jump up, and a little bit of a blow there to pop that football out, as it looked like for a moment yeah. that Lane Rogers was going to haul that in for the first down, but uh, was unable to squeeze that football on a nice hit from Delorier. Dobko and Kuhorn. Uh, back at about their own 25, awaiting the Hugh O'Neill punt. As they'll try to pin them deep. Final play of the third quarter. It's a 14-6 Golden Bears lead. O'Neill, lots of time. He'll get this one away. Skies up there, and Kuhorn will grab it at his own 20. Now he tries to find some room. He is tripped up, and they will scrimmage from about the 27 when we start the fourth quarter. And they have had nowhere to go on returns all afternoon long. The Calgary Dinos as coverage has been absolutely exceptional for the Golden Bears this afternoon on special teams. As they've really limited that return game and taken it out of the football game for the most part. Score update between UBC and Manitoba tied at 17 apiece. That's uh, midway through the second quarter. So uh, that football game is extremely tight, obviously, at a tie score as uh, UBC who surprised Saskatchewan last weekend. I don't think anybody saw that coming, and they did it in pretty convincing fashion at Griffith Stadium in Saskatoon. So it'll be interesting to see how just how good they are if that was just sort of a one-and-done for the T-Birds. Have Manitoba's best game of the season for sure. They've been crunched a couple of times. Yeah, they've been stomped. Well, we saw them stomped in Regina in the season opener by the Rams, who I believe scored two or three defensive touchdowns in that game against the Manitoba Bisons in the last weekend. They played the Alberta Golden Bears, and of course the Bears came out with a big 31-6 win, and I watched that game uh, on Shaw TV, and really nothing doing for the Bisons in that football game as the Bears ran away with it, literally, as Matt Jarvis came on in the second half and did a terrific job. As we start the fourth quarter, it'll be the Dinos with the ball from about their own 26. He's Evan Dom. I'm Dustin Nielsen. Uh, you of C trailing by eight. They've got just two field goals in this football game. Golden Bears defense hasn't given up a touchdown in seven consecutive quarters. And we'll see if they can cause some more damage here. To Dulesky, the 18-year-old quarterback. He's going to try to pass on first down. Has a target on the outside, but that's out of bounds. And they didn't catch it anyway. So it'll be a second and 10 here from their own 26. A wobbler there from Dulesky looking for Kuhorn right by this Calgary bench. And uh, it was taking him out of bounds anyways on that pass. So even if he would have hauled that one in, it would have been a tough one to get his feet down. And will go second and 10 from the 27. 
safe to say the Dinos have moved the ball most effectively today on the ground, whether it be with Dolesky or Walter or any one of the guys they've been running. Yeah, they've moved the ball effectively on the ground in spurts, but really nothing to show for it. Now Dolesky's going to pass again. He's going to be pressured, gets the outside of the right, trying to find a target, and he's got one and a lot of room to run. And finally taken out of bounds around midfield, and it was Lombala as he went left to right. And the rollout, and Dolesky was able to find him. Looked like he was in trouble, but Lombala sprung free. Really good job there by Dolesky to roll out to his right. He got a couple of big-time blocks from his offensive lineman there to find Lombala, who was wide open. No Golden Bears around him as he was sort of left uncovered. And he gets it just inside Alberta territory, almost at the midfield stripe here. First and ten from the 55 for Dolesky. Walter in the backfield. And they'll go to Walter. Use Limbala as a decoy on the back. They've tried that play a couple of times. Walter gets about a yard and a half, maybe two at the most. And it'll be second and about eight for the Dinos. They've really gone away from Matt Walter in the yes. second half. He only had two touches in the third quarter. So now only eight carries total this afternoon. And that's not enough if you're looking to get him involved. 56 yards. Eight yards per carry for Walters. But he hasn't been factoring heavily in this offensive scheme. Now Dolesky in the shotgun. Empty backfield. Rolls to his left. Thought about the pitch. Now he's going to have to throw it. And he misses the intended target. He was pressured a little bit and had to go cross body kind of on the run. That's a tough play to make. And he couldn't make it. And now I feel will come out and kick it back away. Redekop, the intended receiver there for Calgary. But that ball was well outside his reach. And uh, once again, we'll see the punting unit for the Dinos and uh, the defense playing well for Alberta again this afternoon. And it has been, for the most part, a defensive battle between these two teams. Only 20 total points scored thus far. 13-20 to play in the football game. They'll be kicking it away. The Dinos from about their own 45. Valu and David Court back at around their own 20 to receive the punt. There's the kick. It's away. It's not bad, and Court will grab it. And Court taken down. Nowhere to go. And now Julian Marchand will lead the offense back onto the field for the Golden Bears, trying to take more time off that clock. Absolutely, that's the key for the Golden Bears here, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot of the ground game, whether it be Jarvis or Bartoli here in the final 15 minutes of this football game, as uh, the Golden Bears generally... With a lead, like to play conservative. At least that's what we saw last season from them. And uh, at times, they were uh, gave the opposition an opportunity to get back into some football games. First and 10 from the 22 for the Golden Bears. Jarvis, hand off to the outside. And he's able to get positive yardage on the play. Actually gets up to almost the 30. So they'll have about four or five more yards to make up here on second down. Not a bad run there by Jarvis. As uh, it took... Gadosh to take him down there with a tackle just around the neck area there of Jarvis, it looked like. Yeah, he did get his hands up a little bit, didn't he? But uh, Jarvis staying in there as uh, we saw him come out a little bit in the first half. We saw him work on his knee after the first play, actually, but he looks fine the rest of the way. Second and five from the 27 for the Golden Bears. 14-6 to six lead. Jarvis again up the middle, runs into a wall, and uh, that will do it. It'll be two and out here for the Bears. And Hugh O'Neill will be called upon again. Not a very long break there for the Bears' defense as it was two and out and two very quick plays from the Bears' offense. As once again, we will see Hugh O'Neill out there to punt the football away. His 12th punt of the afternoon for the Golden Bears. Calgary has slowly been winning the position battle here in the second half. And they're going to get the ball at around their own 40 and then they'll see what they can do on the return. Mind you, the return game has left much to be desired so far here for the Dinos this afternoon. Still waiting for somebody to really take this football game over. It feels like this one's totally up for grabs right now, just a one-possession game, and neither team really owning this, and it seemed like the Golden Bears have been sort of in the driver's seat in the second half, but uh, you know, have yet to really put up any points on the board, just the safety, and uh, still well for the taking for the Dinos. Now they'll be pushed back even further. And O'Neill will have a little bit more work to do. As they didn't get that ball off in time. 
big crowd here at Foot Field this afternoon, hoping to see the Golden Bears improve to 3-0 and on this season. They're 11 minutes and 32 seconds away from doing that, but a lot of work left to do. And O'Neill will kick this one away from about his own 10, 15-yard line. Snap was low. He's able to grab it, though, and he gets it off, and it's a good kick, and that's going to get caught by Dobko at the 40. And there's a legal block, and that one's going to be blown, and that'll push Calgary back even further. That's a good job at getting downfield there by Krawchuk. Yeah, and you mentioned Flakes fly as Lau with a push in the back there, and we'll see uh, the Calgary Dinos march backwards after that play. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're the Golden Bears right now and you see your defense go back out on the field with an eight-point lead, it's going to be deep in Calgary territory. You have to be pretty confident right now. The defense has played pretty good today. The defense has played extremely well for the Bears, but it really takes one play here from Calgary to get in this football game. All they need is a major score, and this is a totally different game. Yep. And like I mentioned, it's really for the taking here still for either team, and the Bears' defense, despite playing so exceptionally well, their offense has only given them an eight-point lead today. And it will be first and ten on the Calgary 32 for the Dinos and freshman quarterback Eric Dolesky in the shotgun. We'll hand it off. They find some room up the middle. And that was Anthony Woodson on the carry, and he's going to pick up the first down. And Woodson only with his fourth rush of the afternoon here for the Calgary Dinos came in. Uh, first game action after suffering that concussion in week one against the Saskatchewan Huskies on uh, a rather borderline uh, cheap shot by Bryce McCall of the Saskatchewan Huskies. No suspension for him. Of course, we mentioned it earlier off the top. Blake Nill suspended for this football game, the head coach of the Dinos. First and ten from their own 45. The Dinos trailing by eight. The Lesky's going to hang on to it this time, trying to cut up the middle, and they are able to grab him and haul him down. It was Dale Stevenson, and good thing he got him, or else he had first down written all over that one, and they're only going to have a couple of yards, maybe a yard, yard and a half at the most here to pick up the first down. Yeah, it'll be about second and one here for Calgary, and a good run there by Dolesky to just tuck that one down and get a uh, big yardage on first down for the Dinos. And you know, they continue to look good, and then all of a sudden the Bears come up with a big play defensively, so we'll see if that pans out again. Twice now, Dolesky has been picked off in this football game. Duncan Morris and Jay Hetherington getting it done. Now they'll move it on the far side. That'll be the first down and more, and it was Dolesky himself getting it done this time. We've seen Dolesky come out of the backfield, Woodson, Lombala, Walter, a lot of options for Calgary as far as the running game goes. They're a very deep team as far as what they can bring to the table rushing the football and a number of guys in the backfield who can play, Lombala, Woodson, and Walter's the three best running back, com I think the best combination of three running backs in the nation. Dale Stevenson comes out of the game defensively for the Golden Bears. He's been pretty good here this afternoon. Dolesky in the shotgun. The handoff again. Woodson trying to find some room up the middle, just barging up to the 40. And he's just a yard or two shy of another first down as Calgary has decided to put their head down and attempt to run over this Golden Bears defense. And another good run there from the fourth round pick of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Anthony Woodson, has another nine-yard pickup on the ground. And Calgary starting to march this football. And uh, just inside the 10-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Second and about two from the 40. Golden Bears defense could use a stop here. Dolesky up the middle. He'll hand it off. And that's Walter barging up for another 10 yards. And boy, this Dino's offense, at least the running game, doesn't look like it could be stopped right now. No, the run looks very good right now against the Golden Bears. As uh, we have number 53 for the Bears sort of uh, laboring there, Joe Hartman. And he will run off to the sideline. Less than nine minutes in the fourth quarter. Calgary down by eight, but pressing. They are in Golden Bear territory. Dolesky from the shotgun. Two options. And they'll go up the middle again to Woodson. Woodson breaks a couple of tackles. And he's just going to barge his way through for another first down. And holy smokes, where did this running game come from? All of a sudden, the Calgary Dinos just barreling down, putting their heads down and running the football against the Golden Bears. And former play-by-play -play man Corey Graham up here in the booth watching this game with us this afternoon. And 
Uh, just telling me how this one's reminiscent of last year, the home opener against UBC Thunderbirds, where they uh, just decided to run the football, and they ran it right down the Golden Bears' neck and were able to get the victory out of that one as they came back from, I believe, it was about a 24-point deficit at half to win that football game. Teleski in the shotgun, and now he fakes a hand off to Woods and cuts to his right. He's going to be pressured. Pass on the knees, and it looks as though it is caught. And a good job there is going back to help him out. Richard Snyder, I believe, was the intended target, and he's able to haul that one in. And that's the second time, only the second time we've seen Snyder catch a football this afternoon, but a good job by him. And it looked like for a moment Dolesky was in trouble, but he was able to get that football away. I'll go second and five from the 19. Or from the 14, rather. Defense, big stop here if they can hold him. Now Dolesky. To Lombala, he's crunched, but it looks as though he did get enough for the first down. And it will be first and goal for the Dinos. So we've seen all sorts of threats on the ground from Calgary on this drive. We've seen Dolesky, the quarterback, tuck it and run. We've seen Woodson from the backfield, Walter, and of course Stephen Lombala, who has, you know, has looked pretty good this afternoon for Calgary, whether it's in the backfield or in a couple of nice catches. We saw him set up this drive yep. with a big time catch and run to put it inside Bears territory. First and goal from the eight. Dolesky, Woodson, and he's not there yet. Stopped just shy of the goal line. And they'll have one more crack at it for sure, possibly two if they want to go. Well, this is three down territory right now. You're inside the five-yard line here with just over 6.50 uh, to go here in the fourth quarter of play. And you got four guys who can run the football. You better be able to get it in from one and a half yards out. And uh, Dolesky and company with two downs to work with, I think, here. Dolesky with Woodson to his right. Gives the ball to Woodson. Woodson in for the touchdown. And that will make it a two-point ball game. And the Dinos have fought their way back. They'll definitely go for two here. Absolutely. As we see Anthony Woodson pile that one in as he picks up his first touchdown of the season for the Calgary Dinos. And all of a sudden, it's a two-point contest here at Foot Field. And Anthony Woodson, after missing last week with that concussion that he sustained in week one, bounces back and gets his first major of the season. Now the Dinos will go for two to tie this football game. Dolesky in the shotgun wants a timeout. And now they'll have a little bit more time to discuss things here. This would be a big stop for the Golden Bears defense. Absolutely. This is huge for both sides here. As Dolesky takes a timeout after seeing what the Bears are going to bring to the table defensively there as far as what formation they would come at the Dinos with. So the 18-year-old quarterback will talk it over on the sidelines. And this is, you know, after running so many option plays and play action passes uh, this afternoon, Calgary with an opportunity here at the five-yard line to uh, have a lot of their playbook wide open and a lot of options here against the Golden Bears and Certainly look for some sort of misdirection or deception from Calgary on this play. 6.37 to go in the football game. Golden Bears have led the entire way, including by eight here in the second half. But the Dinos on the verge of tying this game. And as Evan Dom mentioned, uh, essentially four different options to run the ball here. And you'd be shocked if the Dinos tried anything else. They got too many weapons on the ground to uh, make this a pure passing play to the end zone. But then again, they could try and surprise you, but they have Lombala out to the right. Lombala to the right, and Woodson right there beside Dzleski. And now Lombala slides to the left. Dzleski in the backfield by himself. Dzleski's going to try to go right up the middle with it, and they stop him. He throws it forward, and it's grabbed by the Golden Bears. A massive stop by the Golden Bears' defense. As that was a d designed play for Dzleski, I believe, to come right up the middle. And it backfired on him. Yeah, I believe that was a design quarterback draw there for Calgary. And absolutely nowhere to go as the Bears saw that one coming. Did a terrific job defensively. And a two-point ball game now for the Bears as they continue to lead. 
and a huge defensive stop there after giving up the touchdown. Time for the offense to step up and get something done for the defense. I mean, your defense has uh, done a great job all day, a couple of picks in, in defensive territory, and then that big stop there to keep it a two-point lead. Uh, time for Julian Marchand and the offense to step up here and help out. At the very least, control the football yes. for a few minutes. Get a few, few first downs here. Do something to keep the defense off the field. They were just out there for an extended drive that resulted in a touchdown for Calgary, but you got to do something here offensively to keep that defense on the sideline, give them an opportunity to rest, and put some points on the board. Get a get a field goal here and make this uh, a major for Calgary, the only way to get ahead of you, and it's going to be key here for the Bears to put something up uh, just to take the pressure off them. Jess Valu, David Court back at about their own 15, waiting for the kick from Ifield. 6.37 to work here. Last time they had the ball, they did not take much time off the clock as the offense went two and out. 14-12. Golden Bears lead. Looking to go to 3-0 and on the season. Here's Ifield with the kick. And that one will come to Jess Valu. Valu grabs it at his own 10. And now he's up to the 15. Gets to the 20. Tied up. Now he finds a little bit of room. And Valu still going. Gets up to the 35. And another pretty decent return. You're looking, I mean, they haven't had outstanding return so far, but the return game for the Golden Bears has been much better than the Dinos this afternoon. Yeah, good return there from Jess Valu. The best return of the afternoon, a 25-yarder. Started at about his own 10 there and got it out to the 34-yard line. Looks like they'll mark it off. So a good return there from Jess Valu. An opportunity for the Golden Bears offense to go to work and kill that clock. 6.22 to go. Any more points on the board would be great. And Marchant. At about his own 30, he's going to work in the shotgun here. Has Jarvis to his left. He's going to be throwing. Marshawn misses the target, and it's picked off. And they're going to take this one back. Defensive touchdown as they run it in. And how about that for a turn of events as Ty Noble gets the pick after it hit off the fingertips of a receiver, and he takes it home. And just like that, the Dinos have a lead. Julian Marshawn really trying to force that football into tight coverage. Michael Lau with the coverage for the Dinos, and it deflects up and into the air, and Ty Noble with the big gift there on the entire left side of the field, and he just struts right into the end zone for the major score, and just like that, the Calgary Dinos with an 18-14 lead here with the point after to come, and uh, an interception the first of the afternoon for the Dinos comes at a huge time for them as they've really come on here in the fourth quarter and all of a sudden they find themselves in the lead. Noble goes in untouched after picking up or picking off that pass and Julian Marchand maybe trying to do a little too much they're gunning that one in probably might have seen Jarvis on that they're going to go for two here the Dinos that'll put them up by six Dulesky and he didn't get it off in time. So a little bit of help there for the Golden Bears defense. I haven't seen anything out of the offense in the second half to really inspire any confidence here no. for the Golden Bears. So putting themselves in a tough position here. They give up the uh, game changer there as far as the interception goes. And then expect it to come out on the field and get a major score to take the lead back. So it'll be interesting to see if they can bounce back and take that adversity well. Adversity well. well. Only points they have in the second half are the two points they got off of a safety. Exactly, and the offense really hasn't been in a position this year where they've been in a late football game where they need to score. Now Dolesky and the Dinos will go for two from about the 10-yard line. They'll be throwing it to the corner, wide open target, and he's got it. As he found a man, it was Richard Snyder, and Snyder was able to hang on. Defense a little late getting there, and that'll make it a 20-14 to ball game. And Richard Snyder wide open in the corner of the end zone there for the Calgary Dinos, and a nice pass by Dulesky. Tight spiral in there as Snyder makes no mistake, calls that one in as they convert the two-pointer, the second uh, opportunity of the afternoon, their second try on the two points is good this time around. Golden Bears offense with six minutes on the clock here in the fourth quarter will need a touchdown to win this football game. They have won so far, but other than that, the offense hasn't done a ton here this afternoon. Defense has been very good for the Golden Bears this afternoon as far as making big plays when they needed to, and then Calgary's defense makes the biggest 
of the afternoon with that pick six for Ty Noble, and that's been the game changer so far as the Golden Bears offense here in a very tough position with six minutes to go and needing a major score. David Court and Jess Valu back at about their 10-yard line to receive the kick. Ifield boots it away, and that one will go to Valu at about the 5. Now he's got it. We saw him pick up about 25 on his last return. Valu trying to find a hole, ran into one of his own men, and they grabbed some, grabbed his feet from underneath him, and he went down at about the 25. So Julian Marchand on the offense uh, looking for a much better performance uh, than we saw in the last possession where it was one play picked off and it ended up back in their own end zone. And again, an interception at an inopportune time, and we saw that too often last season where the Golden Bears would cough the ball up at the absolute worst time of the football game and uh, hopefully a bounce-back opportunity here for Julian Marchand. Offense has not done much here in the second half. They had a decent uh, opening drive due to some penalties by the Dinos. Now Marchand, and they have a lack of communication there. Marchand's going to try to make something out of nothing, and they're going to get the flags as they reached up. A little bit of a horse collar there. Uh, but that's that's lucky there as they had no clue what was going on when that ball was snapped. Yeah, that was very lucky for the Golden Bears. That could have been an ugly play, but Julian Marchand turns it into something. And uh, assuming the flag will be down against Calgary for the horse collar right along the sidelines against Julian Marchand. Horse collar is the call against the Dinos, so that will march the Bears and they'll pick up a first down. That helps. Pretty lucky there to escape with the first down after all the confusion there. And well, they'll get it at about their own 49. And sad as it is, really the only way the ball's moved offensively has been due to Calgary penalties here in the second half. Really, that, that is the only way they have moved the football here in the second half. We saw that one play where there are two 15-yarders against the Dinos. Now here's Marshawn in the shotgun. He's going to be pressured. Goes deep down the right side. Valu tried to turn around, uh, but he could not get back to that ball. And that pass comes up a little bit short. And they'll work again. Second and ten from the 49. Underthrown by about five or ten yards there from Julian Marshawn. No opportunity really to make a catch on that ball for Jess Valu. 5.18 to play. It's a six-point deficit for the Golden Bears, who had led for the majority of this football game. Marshawn working from the 49 in the shotgun. Jarvis behind him. Three receivers to his right, two to the left. And he'll be passing the ball back in the pocket. A little bit of time. Finds some room. He's going to run. Gets the first down and a little bit more. Julia Marchand up the middle. Untouched past midfield. First down, Golden Bears. An absolutely huge first down for the Bears offense as Julian Marchand just tucks it and takes it on his back as he picks up the first down. A good job by him to get about 11 yards for the first down and a big one for the Golden Bears. It will be first and 10 from about the Dinos 48. Offense looking the best they have in the second half. Marshawn from the shotgun again. With Jarvis in behind him. Jarvis will block. Marshawn steps back. A little bit of time. Has a man but misses him that pass. Nobody was getting to that. And he was hit at the end of the play. But he overthrew the intended target, which was Lane Rogers. Rogers wide open there down the sideline for the Golden Bears. And Julian Marshawn overthrows him by a good 10, 15 yards there. No opportunity for Rogers at all to haul that one in. As he had some daylight, too, down the sidelines there for the Bears if Marshawn would have been able to hook up with him. Trailing by six, second and ten from the Dinos 48. Marshawn in the shotgun. And now they'll hand it off to Jarvis. He'll try to barrel his way up the middle. Uh, but he gets about a yard or two on the play, and that is it with about four minutes to play here in the football game. Hugh O'Neill will come back onto the field. An interesting play call there for the Bears' offense as they hand that ball off to Jarvis, and uh, just right up the middle, a pretty straightforward run for the Bears as he picks up you know, two and a half yards there, but not really giving him a great opportunity to get a first down. Well, Jarvis hasn't been, nobody's really been able to do much uh, up the middle here in this football game. I think we've seen one first down between the hash marks uh, this afternoon for the running backs. So uh, an interesting play call there by the offense as they were uh, looking at second and ten there. Hugh O'Neill will kick it away and then the defense will have to go to work. About three and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter and the Bears trail by six. Kuhorn back at about his own 10, and this punt, 
Angled out of bounds. And they'll have it at about the 15 for the Dinos. So the defense needs to step up big time. It's starting to feel the only, like the only way the Golden Bears win this football game is if they get a defensive score. Watching the offense here in the second half. We just saw Calgary get that big time interception, that pick six by Ty Noble. And that has been the difference. That's the difference in the scoring summary so far in this football game. And that's the sense I get here with 3.22 to go is that the only way the Bears get an offense or a major here is through the defense. And the way they played today might be capable with the territory they're in right now. Dolesky. First and ten from his ten. He's going to run it out to left. Now he wants to throw it. And that pass is complete. It was low. But a good job by the receiver to uh, go down and get that ball. Good job there by Redkop to pull that one in. A low pass, but he was able to get his hands underneath that one and get the first down as uh, this play will take us to the three-minute warning here. First and ten from their own 27. Dinos with a six-point cushion. Dolesky, the 18-year-old freshman quarterback, hands this ball off this time. And the Golden Bears are able to stop the running back uh, maybe one or two yards on the play. And that takes us to the three-minute warning. A couple of extra seconds ticked off the clock there. Calgary Dinos don't mind, though. With only no, they're okay with it. 2.38 to go now in the fourth quarter. And... Uh, find themselves in the lead and certainly I don't think they would have expected to be there after the way that third quarter went the Bears defense was just stifling and uh, it took a defensive touchdown to get them in the lead but they got it and it was a huge one just two points for the Bears here in the second half came by a safety early on since then the offense hasn't been able to generate much at all second and eight from the 29 for the Dinos this would be a big stop for the Golden Bears they need it right now Dolesky in the shotgun. Two backs there with him. Hands it off, and they'll run right into a wall. No, they managed to get through, uh, but still not enough for the first down. Looked as though the Bears had stopped him back a little bit further, but a couple of nice moves. And they're able to juke their way up to just inside the 35, and that will bring on the return team for the Golden Bears. Now or never, uh, Evan. Absolutely. Lombala made a nice play there to get some positive yardage, but that's... Uh, that was a huge key stop for the Bears defense. It gives them offense more than enough time to do something here. If they can move the football, they haven't shown really any signs of greatness here in the second half. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can pull one out of their bag of tricks here and find a way to get into the end zone. Court and Valu back at around their own 40. I feel will kick it away from about his 20. And he'll angle this one towards the sideline. Valu heads over there. And that will bounce out at about the 40-yard line, maybe the 39. So they'll have quite a bit of field to go. Field goal won't do it. they got to get into the end zone. Two minutes to go. Good job by Eiffel to take that away from the returners and just punt that one out and not give them an opportunity to get anything on the return. And uh, leave this one in the hands of your defense. They've shown in this fourth quarter that they can handle the Bears' offense and uh, let them win this football game for you. Julian Marchand in the shotgun. First and ten from the Bears 40. They got to get all the way down the field. Marchand rolls to his right, throws over the middle, and that one is through the hands of Lane Rogers. I thought he had it, but it ended up going right through his hands just past the right side of his head, and that would have been first down territory. Went right through Rogers' hands, and it almost fell into the hands of Ty Noble again. The Dinos defender there, as luckily for the Bears, just an incomplete pass because there was a number of Red and white sweaters there looking to make a play as Rodgers was unable to haul that one in. Rodgers has been target number one for Julian Marchand here this afternoon. He'll be on the left side along with Jess Valou. Marchand looking to his left. Throws it into the corner and that was picked. That was to nobody. And that's picked off. And that will pretty much do it as Steve Truzak hauls it in. And I don't know, was that intended for Rodgers again? It didn't didn't have enough on it. Yeah, I think it was intended for Rodgers, but it uh, was a nice one for Steve Truzak there. Just sort of planted himself under that football and made the pretty easy interception there. As, uh, that'll be pretty much all she wrote for the Golden Bears. As 
they come out in the second half and lay an offensive egg here against the Calgary Dinos and a, and a disappointing way to sort of just sort of smoke out of this one for the the Bears. Dolesky has been pretty impressive for a young true freshman. He'll hand this ball off and the, that'll probably be the story of the game the rest of the way here. At that time it was given to Lombala and it's been the four-headed monster out of the backfield here for the Dinos this afternoon. Absolutely, and rushing the football is going to be a key for them with uh, Eric Glavich out at quarterback, and Dolesky's done a good job of running himself as well, something that Glavich does um, exceptionally for the Calgary Dinos, and they really haven't missed a beat here with their quarterback aside from two bad passes that were intercepted. Second and five from the 47. Dolesky hangs on to it. Good decision by the young quarterback, and he's going to run it about 25 yards right up the middle. How about that? He pulled that ball back at the last second because he saw a ton of room up the left side. Yeah, I think Anthony Woodson thought he was going to get that football until the last second, but he yes. sucked it out of there uh, away from the running back and drew, uh, pulled it in and did a good job of running that all the way down to the Alberta 26-yard line as the Bears will take a timeout here. And now they're in field goal range as well, are the Calgary Dinos, so they can make this a two-possession football game. Glavich. Uh, when is he expected back? Is it next week or is he still a couple of weeks away? Either next week or the week after, depending on how things go for him, I think, in practice is the way they're looking at that with his injured knee that he sustained in the first game of the season against the Saskatchewan Huskies. And uh, He's the best quarterback in the nation, so obviously they'll be excited to have him back. And Dulesky also getting some valuable playing time here for Calgary, and he'll be the quarterback of the future um, in the Stampede City for Blake Nill. So... Uh, despite having Glavich out and you don't want it to see him fall down, a uh, great opportunity here for the rookie quarterback who stepped in and looks like he's going to lead his team to two victories and two starts. And it's really helped him to have some of the options he's had coming uh, out of the backfield here this afternoon. It's also opened him up uh, for, for quite a few yards on the ground as well as he's been using his feet almost as much as he's used his arm. Yeah, he's been extremely uh, reliable on the ground and very effective for Calgary in that respect. First and 10 from the Bears, 26 for the Dinos. They'll run this option again. He'll hang on to it. And Dolesky up and over one of the defenders, and then he's finally taken down with a minute 14 to go here in the fourth quarter. Reckless abandon there from the quarterback as he tries to hurdle and get some extra yards. He picks up about four yards on the play. And another timeout by the Bears. Second and five for Dolesky and the Dinos. Doesn't get any easier for the Bears after this as Saskatchewan comes to town. No, that's going to be a tough matchup for the Golden Bears as uh, they'll play the top two teams in the conference back-to-back weeks. And it looked like they were on their way uh, in the third quarter, at least, to a victory over Calgary. But uh, the offense did absolutely nothing here in the second half, and that's been their downfall. And a very deflating game for head coach Jerry Friesen and company, I think, after coming out and looking pretty strong in the first half, going into halftime with a lead and letting that slip, slip away at home here against the Calgary Dinos, who uh, came into this football game with uh, some question marks as far as just how good they were. I think everybody expected a lot out of this team. I had them number one during the preseason, and they didn't uh, have exceptional games to start the season, but certainly a good game here in the second half, at least against the Bears, as they look like they're going to pick up their second victory. A minute and 14 seconds away from closing this one out. Dolesky under center. Walter in behind him. I'll hand it off to Walter, and Walter is stopped, and that should be short of the first down. So an opportunity here for Ifield. And this will make it a two-possession game, so this field goal still does matter for Calgary here with just over a minute to go in the fourth quarter. If uh, I felt can get this one through the uprights, that's uh, pretty much it for the Golden Bears, barring something miraculous. Walter getting the ball in that last carry. He hasn't had to be too significant for this Calgary offense today. Just one piece of what's been a very effective group of four guys running the ball for the Dinos this afternoon. Now I feel from about 25. Clock running down. This will make it a two-possession football game. I feel up. And that one is good. And that makes it a 23-14 lead for the Dinos. And that 
pretty much is the football game for Alberta. As Calgary comes out here in the second half and uh, gets some big time plays. And uh, they're going to get a victory here against the Bears. As they got 17 second half points to Alberta's two. And uh, that's it for the Golden Bears here. As uh, it'll be a deflating one and a tough one to swallow. Just uh, based on how little your offense did in the second 30 minutes. And that was pretty much next to nothing as now Marshawn. From the 35, he'll step back into the pocket over the middle. And that one is caught by Rogers. He'll bounce right back up. And they'll try to move things as quick as they can here with just 45 seconds left in the ball game and needing a couple of scores. You're right, it would take an absolute miracle right now for the Dinos to not win this football game. Marshawn working from the 47. Steps back, is going to try to go deep, has a man. Jess Ballou lays out, and he could not get there. That pass is a little bit too far for Jess Ballou. Certainly some potential on that play as Julian Marchand have Valou streaking right over the middle there, right inside the Calgary 35-yard line at about the 25, actually, was Valou laid out, but it was still too far for him as he was unable to grab that one. Second and 10 from the Bears, 47, 38 seconds left to go in the ball game. Marshawn in the shotgun, Jarvis to his left, now Marshawn sets back, has a little bit of time, wants to run it, was in trouble, throws it out, and he's picked off again as the under throws the intended target, and I believe it was Jess Valou, and any hope they had is gone now, 30 seconds left, the Dinos will take this football game uh, over here to wrap things up. So Calgary will run its record to 2-1, and one, as the uh, Bears will fall to 2-1, and one, so they'll be tied atop the standings. And uh, depending on what Saskatchewan can do, we'll see uh, just how things shake out. Disappointing way to, to finish this football game. Uh, we saw, we thought we were going to see a different kind of football team this year with the Golden Bears, a team that uh, had the makeup and the sort of threats offensively to, to win a game and, and not necessarily be a detriment, but they were in the second half here as they didn't generate anything and uh, you know, even just keeping the defense off the field would have been key for them. Just to get a couple of first downs, some key first downs. Move the ball a little bit. Yeah, keep your defense off and give them an opportunity to get a little bit of a breather. Because every time it seemed the Bears' offense came out, it was two and out. And uh, then the defense was put in some tough positions. Doug McLean uh, will be joining us here in the post-game show. He will take over as the Golden Bears uh, unable to go to 3-0 and on the season after wins over UBC and Manitoba. They fall here to Calgary uh, 23-14. Uh, but through three games, a record of 2-1. and Where is that on your expectation for this football team this year? Uh, I expected them to, to be a playoff team, but not as good as Calgary and Saskatchewan. And I think you know we saw it this afternoon. Uh, not quite at the level where they need to be. Uh, this was this was the game that they were going to prove just how good they were, and we'll see again next week if they can rebound. But uh, I think their record flattered them a little bit coming into this contest. And Calgary, a veteran club, a very good football team, and despite having some pieces out, including the reigning Heck Creighton uh, Award winner and Eric Lavich, they proved that they're a very good football team and that they're still among the best teams in the nation. And uh, disappointing one for the Golden Bears, but they'll have to regroup. They don't have any time to think about this one. Because all of a sudden they could be at 2-2 two and two after next weekend as they host Saskatchewan. And that's a big time game for them. And if they can win that football game, then I think they prove to themselves and they prove to some other people that they were uh, worthy of that 2-0 record coming into this week. That game will be Friday night at 7 o'clock right here at Footfield against Saskatchewan. Golden Bears fall to 2-1 and one on the year, uh, dropping a 23-14 contest to the UFC Dinos. Doug McLean will join Evan Dom here for your post-game show. Uh, that will do it for me. I'm Dustin Nielsen, and the boys coming up with your post-game show here after a 23-14 Golden Bears loss to the Dinos.
Welcome back to Foot Field on the south campus of the University of Alberta where the Golden Bears have been defeated by the number four ranked Calgary Dinos, 23-14. Disappointing finish for the Golden Bears who are ahead heading into the fourth quarter, 14-6. But their offense just absolutely, which was not great all day, absolutely disappeared in the fourth quarter. And Calgary able to run the ball right down the, the tired Bears defense. And that results in a 23-14 loss. The Dinos move to 2-1. and one. The Bears fall to 2-1. and one. Take a quick look at the stats before we bring Evan Dom back in. Passing on the day, Eric Dolesky, 7 for 20. 